A new story published by The Intercept may be one of the biggest stories of our lives. I believe it. I believe it, it may be. It could be one of the biggest stories in the world, if not. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, it is one of the biggest stories in the world. It may be one of the biggest stories in the history of the United States. According to new documents released by The Intercept, along with documents revealed through a lawsuit filed by the Missouri Attorney General, we now have hard proof that executives at big tech companies were colluding with DHS and the FBI to manufacture consent, manipulate public opinion, censor certain information that was deemed uh, hurtful to U.S. financial institutions, and influence the elections in the way they wanted. It's right there. Now, I know that most of us knew this was happening because we've seen so many grains of sand forming that heap. But now we actually have leaked text messages where you can see the DHS talking with Microsoft and the Microsoft exec saying we need to get more companies on board with government involvement. Vijaya Gade of Twitter was directly meeting with the government monthly, according to The Intercept. No wonder she got fired. This is uh, this is huge stuff. They said that uh, the, the goal was to manip- manipulate information on racial justice, financial. I mean, this is crazy. So, yeah. And uh, a week before the election, no less. I kind of believe that this leak was intentional because Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter meant that he is sitting on a trove of evidence. And it was only a matter of time before he got it. And so they're basically thinking, we better get in front of this one. It was reported that the Biden administration was seeking to have a national security review of the Twitter sale to Elon and then ultimately didn't. And I wonder if that was because they knew something bad was going to happen. The information would be released and now it is. So now we know this is a direct violation of the Constitution. And, I, and that's probably putting it lightly. Some are calling it treason and sedition, considering you've got elements of the government actively colluding with people like Vijaya Gade to manipulate information, to censor people, to violate their rights and manipulate our elections. Literally, they report one of the reasons for this was the 2016 election, fear about disinformation. So they started actively interfering. Here's the crazy thing. The Facebook login portal for the government is still up. We can show you. That's how crazy it is. We're going to talk about that. Plus, we have another really ridiculous and insane story about Paul Pelosi and the conspiracy theories around what really went down with his house, because you either believe that a QAnon cultist tried to murder Nancy Pelosi, but only found Paul, or you think that a leftist Black Lives Matter pride uh, flag waving male prostitute was having a good time with Paul Pelosi. And I think both stories are a bit over the top, to be completely honest. I, I, I think we can we can break down. If you're really if, if you're really looking for what happened, you can come up with some reasonable explanations. But all that matters, we need the information. We need the evidence. We need the surveillance footage. So we'll get into that. Before we get started, my friends, head over to liquidgoldlift.com and pick up your BioTrust Ageless Multicollagen. It's a new URL, you notice, because this has turmeric in it, ginger and, uh, and black pepper. And it's, re- it's remarkably delicious. I put it in my coffee. It ta- makes it taste like some kind of Christmas spice latte. So the Ageless Multicollagen, it's collagen, it's good for your skin, your bones, your joints. And turmeric is purported to have tremendous anti-inflammatory benefits, especially when combined with black pepper. So I I was reading on like Mayo Clinic, they're saying that can help with arthritis pain and it can also, it's generally anti-inflammatory. So support the show and head over to liquidgoldlift.com and you will get a 60 day money back guarantee. You'll get collagen and turmeric in one simple to use liquid gold formula. Just put it in your drink, you mix it up. The healthy aging support of five different types of premium collagen, five key types of collagen you need from four different sources, provides your body with the age-defying power of organic turmeric. For every order today, BioTrust will donate a nutritious meal to a hungry child in your honor through their partnership with NoKidHungry.org. To date, BioTrust has provided over 5 million meals to hungry kids. Please help BioTrust hit their goal of 6 million meals this year. It's non-GMO and free of artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives. There's no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. You'll get free shipping with every order and free VIP live health and fitness coaching from BioTrust's team of expert nutrition and health coaches for life with every order and their free e-report, the 14 foods for amazing skin. Again, this time it is liquidgoldlift.com. Check it out. And don't forget to don't forget to head over to TimCast.com, become a member to support our work directly. We're going to have a members only show coming up for you about 11 p.m. Uncensored, often a little bit spicy, not so family friendly. You don't want to miss it. So don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and and more is Jake Beckett. Tim, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Who are you? Good, sir. 
So I am uh, Jake Beckett from the great state of Arkansas, born and raised. Um, I played football for the University of Arkansas back in the day, back in the glory days. We had some good teams back in those days. Played four years with the Patriots. Uh, stole a Super Bowl ring from those guys. Stole it. Uh, yeah, stole it. I, I was uh, I was lucky to be there. Um, I tell everyone that it wasn't really Tom Brady and Bill Belichick who were the real masters of the program. It was it was all me. All you. It, Everybody it, knows. It, it was all me. Everyone knows that. Um, and then I joined the Army. Um, I spent four years in the Army. I was an infantry officer. Uh, went through Ranger School, deployed to Iraq, and then I ran for U.S. Senate out of Arkansas. Came a bit short this time, but um, you know I love to to serve my state, my country, and you know I want to be in the fight, and that's where I am. Right on. Well, thanks for hanging out. That should be fun. Thanks for having me. We got Luke, of course. Hey, guys. Happy Halloween. For the record, I, I did have a Halloween costume, but it was uh, a bit inappropriate for the <laughs> show. If you want to see it, you can on my Twitter or Instagram at Luke We Are Change. But I'm just wearing, a, you know, just a regular JoJo Biden T-shirt. If you get the reference, you know exactly what's going on. You are in the know. And it's a shirt of a big nose sniffing Biden. You could get it on the bestpoliticalshirts.com because you do. I am here. Thank you so much for having me. What's up, everybody? Ian Crossland here, sipping on a little bit of this liquid gold turmeric myself. Not an advertisement, just telling you it's delicious. <clears throat> That's delicious, in case you knew that. Uh, good, to see, good to see you. What's up, sir? Hey, and I'm Serge.com. I'm also drinking this turmeric drink. It is rather good. And uh, happy Halloween, guys. Hope you're feeling spooky. I know I am. We had a Halloween contest earlier. Uh, a lot of really great costumes. Carter built a Mothman costume with a helmet that had glowing eyes. Yeah, super he, ended cool. up, he ended up winning. But uh, we're going to have that up tomorrow on the Cast Castle vlog showing you all of the ridiculously offensive. Like, everybody just decided to be offensive. That, that, it's like, it's what you do, I guess. So anyway, let's jump into this first story and talk about the end of the world. How about that? We have this from The Intercept. Truth Cops. That's the headline. It's amazing. Leaked documents outline Homeland Security's plans to police disinformation. I'm kind of surprised they put it that lightly. Let me show you this Twitter thread from Lee Fang. One of the writers on this article, he says, docs show Facebook and Twitter closely collaborating with the Department of Homeland Security and FBI to police disinfo plans to expand censorship on topics like withdrawal from Afghanistan, origins of COVID, info that undermines trust in financial institutions. FBI agent Laura Demlo was in communication with Facebook that led to the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story in 2020 over the false allegation that it was disinformation. This year, she met with Twitter DHS to stress, quote, we need a media infrastructure that is held accountable. Check this out. Facebook and Twitter created a special created special portals for government to rapidly request takedowns of content. The portal, along with the NGO partners used to censor a wide range of content, including obvious parody accounts and content disagreeing with government pandemic policy. That right there. The government doesn't like that you're dissenting, was colluding with communications platforms, private collusion, literal conspiracy to silence you for your dissent. Check this out. There's text messages right here. The emails and documents show close collaboration between DHS and private sector. Twitter's Vijaya Gade, fired by Elon Musk last week, met monthly with DHS to discuss censorship plans. Microsoft exec texted DHS, quote, Platforms have to get comfortable with government. Incredible. He says, how does DHS justify its evolving mission from countering foreign terror groups to policing domestic disinfo on social media? Leaked planning docs show the agency argues false information is a source of radicalization and violence. And of course, I really want you to see this. This right here is the Facebook URL for the Facebook. What is this? The portal is for onboarded partner requests pertaining to content issues on Facebook and Instagram. If you are an onboarded partner, please put in your request through this portal. Still live. The Facebook link for the government to go and, and tell Facebook what to take down is still available right now. This, cra this is crazy. This report's actually ridiculously long. I was reading through it. It's massive. They mentioned that they were policing information on, say, like racial justice. For what reason would the or what justification would the government have to do anything like this outright it's subverting our elections especially now they're saying it's ongoing and twitter executives facebook microsoft were meeting with the dhs to, to police what they deem as dis disinformation misinformation and malinformation 
And uh, to me, this is far beyond that. This is a criminal conspiracy. This is the government colluding with big tech social media in order to make sure that they have all the power, all the influence, and anyone daring to just question them, not just about you know racial justice issues, as you mentioned here, but, but the topics here that they specifically decided to intervene on make them look bad. It was also Afghanistan. It was also the origin of COVID. It was also a product that, of course, they were working in colluding to make a lot of people take. And, and, and when you look at those issues, what do those issues have in common, especially Afghanistan? They clearly show something that the government got wrong. They clearly led people down a wrong pathway. They clearly screwed the people of Afghanistan over. They, they clearly screwed all the soldiers there, but they wanted to control the narrative so they could still look like they did something good when they obviously did something horrible. And w- when you're doing that, when, you, when you're when you're creating godlike power and authority to silence people, to censor people, and to control narratives, we're, we're talking about huge amounts of power that that is almost virtually impossible to to hold anyone accountable to. I'm trying to elevate my perception to the level of global governance, like. If if I was in control of American military and and there's like a world because like for me I'm an American citizen American politics and and the Constitution that's key if you violate the Constitution you're you're messing up but then you elevate to the next level of like I'm now in control of the military and they intern Japanese people during World War II though they will violate the Constitution in times of great stress to make sure that we all survive. I'm, I, I need this. This is going to be settling in. I, I mean, I had a feeling that they've been doing this since, you know, 2012, 2013, but it's just... Well, I've been I don't telling know if that people, has to happen. Yeah, it's just I've been, confirmation. Yeah, I, I've been screaming about this. This has been happening for years, and everyone's like, you know, you can't really prove it. It's not happening. Because when you look at all the censorship efforts that they were they were doing throughout the years, it all made sense that this was organized not for the benefit of big tech social media, but for the benefit of the people in charge, in power. And now we have the documents. Now it's proven. Sorry, I cut you off. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, to me, it's I, I feel sorry for those who still believe we have a truly private sector. Because... Really, this is the government. They're outsourcing, you know, their dirty work to these giant tech corporations. And, you know, we saw it during COVID. You know, we, we saw it. I, I think it really started during the 2016 elections, you know, because Trump, I mean, Trump won in large part, in my opinion, due to his influence on social media. He was able to, um, you know, go around the, the, the corporate legacy media, you know, go around that distorting prism um, of their influence and go directly to the people. And they kind of had this Rubicon, this never again moment. Um, we're not going to let this happen again. You know, we, we can't let these America first populist types go around our you know gate, gatekeeping mechanism and go straight to the voters. And so that's where it started, in my opinion. I'm sure it happened before that, but 2016 was kind of the collective never again moment. And I think it was accelerated through Trump's administration. Um, you know, they 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 took it exponentially. Uh, you know, higher during COVID during 2020. Um, and it's just it's really sad because there's so many politicians and, and people in the GOP, you know, our leaders who are supposed to be representing us at the highest level, who are still fighting the same battle they were they were pretending to fight back in the 80s. You know, it, it was a, you know, a give and take on corporate tax rates. And, you know, we're the we're the party of small government and we're the party of, you know, uh, freedom of enterprise. And, and that 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 battle has been lost. And so now we're seeing this terrifying union of big government tyranny and outsourced to these big tech corporations. And nothing can be more, um, you know, subversive to liberty. And, you know, until we recognize that, until we as a people and we as a you know Republican Party, those on the right, until we just come to grips with that new reality, we're never going to be able to even, you know, much less defeat it, even fight back against it. Take a look at this from the story. Trump signed, uh, Trump signed it. They say that the the uh, stepped up counter disinformation effort began in 2018 following high profile hacking incidents of U.S. firms when Congress passed and President Donald Trump signed the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Act, forming a new wing of DHS. Wow. Trump Trump probably he said, hey, it sounds like a good idea to me. I wonder if you read it. Probably not. Probably not. He probably had some advisor just be like, this is good. It's going to protect our infrastructure. And he was like, makes sense to me. And he signed off on it.
Little did he know that all of a sudden now damning information that was bad about, say, Joe Biden's family would be suppressed because the FBI was going to Facebook and being like, look out for this. Yes. And not only that, but, but this is specifically referencing this story by The Intercept and these leaked documents are specifically mentioning the, the Hunter Biden story, which they even named the FBI agent in this story that went to Facebook and said, hey, this is disinformation. You got to take this down when the FBI knew that they were lying through their teeth after their interview with Tony Bobolinsky. They knew that the Hunter Biden story was legit. It wasn't Russian disinformation, but but Trump signed into law what essentially was a major component and part of him getting kicked out of office, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, and, and not only that, but, but a lot of the nonsense that the American people had to go through within the last two and a half to three years when it came to COVID, the lockdowns, small businesses being shut down, they were only able to get away with it because they dominated the conversation. Anyone speaking out against them would be censored, would be kicked offline, Doctors would be uh, kicked out of medical boards, would have their licenses taken away for even questioning what was going on here. And now we're finding out that was that was what the DOJ and the FBI were making sure was happening, because now we're finding out that they were at the head of making a lot of these decisions, pushing for censorship, pushing for disinformation, not in, in, in a, an alleged fight against fighting it. But in reality, they were really pushing it. They, no, 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 no. You said were. They are. Did you say yeah. that the they, portal is still yeah, active still on active. Facebook right now? They specifically yep. went to Facebook and asked them to censor specifically the Hunter Biden yes. story. OK, then Mark Zuckerberg lied to Joe Rogan. Yes, when he said yes. Look, they, they were not yeah, specific. That, he had no idea. Ian, Ian, or he didn't know. Look at this. There is a Facebook portal where they can go and specifically say, take this down. Yeah. Now, 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 hold on. To be specific and to be very careful, Mark Zuckerberg, maybe the one time that the FBI didn't have to go through this portal and they were talking to Mark on the phone, maybe he was referring to some very specific moment and that's how it went down. You're not going to convince me when Facebook has an active portal for government takedown requests that they went to Mark and said, there may be a story. We can't tell you which one, though. And then Mark went, better take down this Hunter Biden laptop story. Don't buy it. Not when they when Facebook built them a portal to specifically request takedowns. Yeah. And when you look at the story and specifically the tweets, they, they mention an FBI agent, Laura uh, Delma, I, I, uh, Delmo Low. Uh, Dem, Demlo? Was that Demlo. What it was? And, and specifically referencing the Hunter Biden story to the FBI, to, to, to Facebook. Right. So, so they're mentioning it from all these leaked documents. It, it's more in our face more than ever. And I'm, I'm sure the story is well sourced, and, and I'm sure there are some within these institutions who are, you know, on our side. But you know, to my to to, to my mind, I'm wondering where the where, where is the right wing resistance inside these institutions? It, it's kind of like the dog that didn't bark. We're, we're not seeing the kind of organized resistance to the Biden administration that we saw from these institutions in permanent D.C. as during the Trump administration. So that tells me these these institutions they're they're. They're beyond being salvaged. They're not reformable. And I just don't, I don't hear enough from people who are in politics on our side, on, on the right, kind of the old right, as I say, who truly grasp that. Who say, like, you know, there, there's, no, there's no nipping around the edges of the FBI. There's no nipping around the edges of the DOJ. There's no nipping around the edges of, these, of DHS. Because they are, they are in cahoots with, with permanent Washington, with the left-wing media, with big tech. You know, and, and until we understand the power of that union, we can't defeat it. Yeah, you got to build systems that are indiscernible, that are like um, decentralized, that are mesh networked, that aren't relying on centralized services, that run under the radar. Because I don't think you, you mean, can compete with global government military force. You mean like the LavaBit uh, email servers, Ian? <clears throat> that, that specifically were, were started, that Edward Snowden was using, where the NSA came to and gave them an official national security letter saying, shut up, give us all your information, or you're going to jail. The LavaBit story. I actually interviewed the founder a few years ago, Ladar Levinson, uh, absolutely stood up to some crazy insanity when it came to the federal government coming after him, trying to, of course, spy on whistleblowers. Well, and he leaked that story, and he actually safeguarded a lot of very important uh, you know, data and information. This is LavaBit is an open source encrypted webmail service founded yes. in 2004, and it was 2013 the government ordered it to turn over its SSL private keys yeah. so that then they were, yeah, I think the service should not be holding onto the private keys. That Those should be the only the sender and receiver should have those keys that's a big part of it i want to say did i call it or did i call it here's a tweet it's an excerpt from that story in a march meeting laura demlo an fbi official warned the threat of subversive information on social media could undermine support for the u.s government imagine that do you think look 
I got to imagine you're trying really hard every day to undermine support for the U.S. government. But uh, I'll keep reading. Demlo, according to notes of the discussion attended by senior executives from Twitter and J.P. Morgan Chase, stressed that we need a media infrastructure that is held accountable. This is what I was saying, that the reason Elon tried backing out is because they showed him confidential information saying we have these arrangements with the federal government and you can't disclose it and you now have to buy it. And Elon probably was like, no way, dude, no way. Now, maybe that's not the case. But what I did get right was that Twitter was actively working with the government on what they deemed to be national security issues, albeit bunk ones. What may have happened now, because also I'm, I won't say I, I got 100% correct. What, what may have happened after this, Elon Musk buys Twitter. Now he's leaking information. You guys see this? The evidence that they withheld information on fraud or whatever. He, po- he posted this tweet of the guy being like, Basically, we're doing what Elon's accusing us of doing, and the information was withheld from the courts. I think Elon gets Twitter. The Obama, uh, I'm sorry, the Biden, well, you know, yeah, Obama, the Biden administration way. panics. They leak this information because they know Elon is now sitting on a trove of evidence, and he probably will publish it, or it will get leaked, and they can't control it anymore. Yeah, he, he knows how the federal government manipulated the, 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 in, the public landscape manipulated the elections, manipulated national strategies, manipulated what happened in Afghanistan, manipulated what happened with, with COVID. That, that, that's a treasure trove of information that he has as his fingertips right now that could show us the direct manipulation by government, the direct manipulation and interference of government when it came to, of course, destroying free speech in this country. And again, I've been screaming about this for years and everyone's always was saying, but it's a private company. It's a private company. I still remember, you know, even three years ago being on the show and then there was a guest saying, but there's a private company. They get to do what they want. And I was like, they're not a private company. They were never a private company. They always had connections with the federal government. They are a proxy of the U.S. government. Exactly. And the special interests who control the U.S. government that actually pull the strings of the bureaucrats inside of Washington, D.C. And then people need to realize this is this is real. This is absolute real life crazy conspiracy that, that, has, week, that has turned out to be true. A week before the election. Let me tell you guys. We hear from, uh, from the left, the de- Democrats, they're like, this election is could be the death of democracy. Like if the Republicans win, the Republic is over or whatever. Well, they don't say Republic, they say the death of democracy. I genuinely believe it. This story got exposed that this election very well may be a battle for the soul of the Republic, to which I don't even know if Republicans can save it, to be completely honest. But certainly Democrats are going to rip it to shreds. And the last line of defense is going to be some of these MAGA Republicans who might actually push back against this. But let me put it this way. They started this campaign after the 2016 election. We then saw how the media was manipulating. We saw all of it. We saw the lies about Donald Trump constantly. Social media censorship, the banning of Alex Jones and Milo Yiannopoulos, Project Veritas. They are doing this specifically because they want to manufacture consent. The Democrats have controlled Congress since 2018. This has been ramping up. Trump signed the CISA uh, Act around 2018 with Democrats in control. If they retain control of Congress, these programs will manipulate and subvert public discourse, manufacture consent, and interfere with our elections. If there is not an effort in any way, I don't know if Repub- I'm not saying Republicans are guaranteed to do anything about it, but they're certainly the only ones who are, who are able to. If this is not, if the Democrats win, this is going to ramp up tenfold, and then that's it. But hold on, I want to I want to kind of question that a little bit because it was Donald Trump who put this into place, right? And if you're a Republican coming into power, right? That, 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 that's like a, the ring of Sauron right here. You have the ability to, to navigate and control speech online. You have the possibility to fortify elections. Why would Republicans give out that power? Yeah. Because it consumes you. Exactly. Yeah, but why? I don't, I don't trust the Republican Party. I mean, yeah. not the leadership. There are good Republicans. There are good members, and there are good candidates running this cycle. But what I struggle with is, you know, here we go again. We've had wave elections in this country before. 1994, 2010, 2016, we had the trifecta, you know, White House, both both chambers of Congress. And here we are again, we're talking about another wave election. Well, where did those three previous wave elections get us? Right here. So what's going to be different about it this time? You know, if we take the House, you know, we'll have Kevin McCarthy as the speaker. If we take the Senate, we'll have Mitch McConnell as majority leader. And I'm not saying it's a good thing to have the Democrats in full control for two more years. But, you know, I, I just want to hear how this is going to be different this time. I agree. And what frustrates me to no end is 
we, we don't treat our voters with respect. We don't treat the, the right-leaning people in this country, our constituents. We, we don't have the humility to look them in the eye and say, hey, yeah, what we've been doing has been failing. And we're going to try something different. Yeah, I don't see them doing anything different. But that, that's just me. That's my own perspective. Yeah. But, we, we, yeah. I mean, there's, there's Thomas Massey, there's Marjorie Taylor Greene, there's Rand Paul. There are great there's, members. They may, if the Republicans get in, they may be able to make some, look, it's the best chance we got. That's Especially really in say. the House. There, there's some great members on the House side. The Senate's a different story. But unless, unless your proposal, Luke, is, I don't know, vote libertarian. It's a uniparty. <laughs> two head, it's, a, it's two heads of the same snake at the end of the day. Just We also have to understand our, our public opinion matters on this. What we say, what we think, how we respond to this story, how we share this story absolutely matters. And I say that specifically because if you remember not so long ago, uh, the, the federal government tried to pass the disinformation government board, and they had a disinformation czar th that they were putting forward. Essentially, what they were trying to do is codify what they were doing in secret. And then the uh, wide response to that was, hell no, are you crazy? You want to control speech in this country? You're insane. But now we're finding out, oh yeah, they were just doing it the whole time, but under a sub-organization of the DHS under CISA. That's the organization that was doing this. That's the organization doing this now. So, so we have to understand they're only doing this in secret because that's the only way that they could get away with this. Right now, we, we need more of a bigger pushback. And, and again, left, right, I, I think we, we shouldn't be consumed with parties. We shouldn't be consumed by making mass generalizations about individuals based on their gang and their affiliation. We should focus on the individual. If an individual is good, we should support them. If an individual sucks and is a corporatist and is a banker and is a little sellout status chill that will screw you over, don't support that person. I don't think that the solution is in the government, though. I think that, it, as always in the United States, it comes from the public, the private sector, the, the people that are willing to build systems that adhere to the U.S. Constitution. The government's there to protect us if things go wrong. Um, and I think social media in general, you're never going to be able to ask it. Stop manipulating. Stop manipulating things. Stop. It's never going to stop. It's there for the world. The problem with free systems is they're easy to manipulate. They're easy to hijack. So that's one kind of flaw in the United States. Freedom and democracy it lets people come in and just twist it around and say whatever they want and that's, spread communism and spread authoritarianism. And so that's. Oh, oh, I, I think that. Uh, oh, anyway, continue. Yeah, I'll get I was going to say that's actually, actually one of the big conspiracy theories of history is that the British didn't actually surrender the Revolutionary War, they realized that we were attempting to build a government of for and by the people. And they said, wait, 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 we can we can finance control of this of the of the colonies. We don't need to do anything. And they really did. The central banks, they warned us that the central banks are more dangerous than standing armies. And over the years, they've tried. This is the third one that they've installed in the United States. Right. What was it? Yeah. Andrew Jackson got shot after he broke up the second one. He did. Uh, I don't <laughs> just finished a great then Andrew Jackson biography. Yeah, I mean, he was a hero. I mean, imagine yeah. imagine abolishing the federal bank and being in office with a federal surplus, not mm -hmm. a debt, a surplus. I mean, the big controversy in his administration was how to distribute the surplus amongst the states. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that yeah. problem. And then they put him on the twenty dollar bill. But but yeah. but you're you're talking about something here that's very important here because this DHS board, this information board, was also working to, of course, make sure that information wasn't being released that would undermine our financial institutions inside of the United <laughs> States and trust in the financial institutions that literally have bankrupted this country. It's not a recession; it's a robbery. What's happening right now with the banks and what they've done to the American public. Yeah, it, it, I, they, they have to really hate us. I, I imagine like Ian rank, ragging on the Federal Reserve 24 I and mean, Luke as well. Well, uh, how does this show exist? Some people just want to end it all and they'll be like, take it down to burn it to the ground. But I'm not like that. And I'm, I'm one of like make a better system so that we can transition away from the Federal Reserve into like a decentralized system of banking. Yeah. You know, the yeah. great thing about the Federal Reserve is if someone robs it and takes your money, they'll cover it. FDIC insurance, like if, if your bank, if you lose your bank card, you can go get another one. With crypto, if you lose your keys, yeah. all your crypto's gone forever. You have nothing. If someone steals your crypto out of your wallet, you are, you're, you have nothing. Yeah, it's a barrier. And there's no recourse. Da very dangerous for like the common man. I understand why there's reticence, but at the same time, like it's like pick your poison. Do you want total overarching control authoritarianism or do you want fully decentralized laissez-faire good luck out there lifestyle? I don't, you know, I don't, maybe there's a middle ground. I probably want a middle ground. 
Um, but who's going to be, who would be in control of the crypto wallets? Who would be there to be like, Man. I'll make sure I'll be the one that'll hold your keys for you. That doesn't I, I, I think any, anything's better right now than the current system we have now where the government literally prints money and just hands it to the richest people in the world. I, I think that specifically the people who, you know, promote the ESG score and use that kind of leverage and power in order to push woke nonsense onto people that that should be pushed back on. But again, a lot of it is coming from top down corporations that get a lot of money from the Federal Reserve. I, I agree, Luke. They, they should not be printing money and giving it to the rich people richest people in the world they should be printing the money and giving it to me and then, I, then then i'd be totally okay with it right you know just just give me the money and, and then we're good because because that's that's the way that's a the lot way of people do think works. like that yeah that's yeah. exactly how people think they everybody thinks that they have all the answers and actually interestingly it tends to be that the only answers come from decentralization when everyone is actually arguing and then the ideas that make the most sense rise to the top and then end up succeeding. Yep. There's like value to, to like minimal centralization, like nodes of centralization all over the place, proliferative, you know, like you don't want more than 60 yeah. people involved in a node or something well, like sure. that. But, but Tim, what you're mentioning right now is extremely important and exactly what the Department of Homeland Security is preventing. They're preventing the best ideas from going out there. Yeah. They're preventing, you know, solutions. They're preventing a lot of this nonsense to be stopped in our lives. The pain and suffering that a lot of people are going through is because of the disinformation out there that they are spewing actively and they are not fighting it. They are making sure that they are codifying their agenda, their narrative, which goes against you and everyone else. That's a great point because, you know, that, that's the, that was the original concept of our government was a very decentralized system with very little, uh, you know, power, uh, you know, vested in a central government. The, the states could be the, the incubators of liberty, as I think someone, one of the founders said. But of course, the, the, the powers that be, they understand that when people are presented with, you know, the truth with an opposing narrative, they're attracted to it. You know, it gets them thinking, and it reduces their own power. So they have to squash it, and, and that's what we're seeing with this story. That's what we've seen for the past six years, you know, on steroids. And it's it's never going to stop until they feel the consequences, um, you know, of 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 that decision they've made. Well, I think they're losing control, and this story is one element of that. But take a look at this from Daily Mail. Democrats demand a national security investigation into Saudi Arabia's stake in Twitter under Elon Musk. Senator says Kingdom wants to repress political speech and impact U.S. politics. Boy, was that <laughs> fast. The Saudi prince has had a major stake in Twitter for a very long time. And not a single one of these psychopaths batted, batted an eye until now with Elon Musk taking over. There, there was a tweet and they said, how long until all of a sudden the Democrats, the Butma private company Democrats, change their mind and say, we need regulation and insight and oversight into this? Well, here you go. Yeah, there Robert Reich immediately with the yeah. Elon thing, like lit him on, like not, but just set him off. Like Rob, all of a sudden now he's screaming about Elon being an oligarch and we need to break it up. Like he never mentioned that. I mean, I've never. Like Jack Dorsey wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Wait yeah. until they find out about TikTok in China. Wait until, <laughs> wait until they find out about Facebook and, you know, the Department of Homeland Security. As we just <laughs> right. find out what found out about right now. <laughs> Again, this is clearly an attempt to punish Elon Musk as he is presenting an opportunity to fight back against all of this nonsense and provide the best ideas to rise to the top. That's an idea that's scaring the crap on the individuals who have a monopoly on ignorance and violence. Violent. And that, of course, is the state. Absolutely. I mean, the Saudi Public Investment Fund, they've, you know, publicly, uh, they've invested um, in this Live Golf Tour recently. Um, you know, they were early investors in Uber. Um, you know, the PIF has their hands in a lot of American companies. That's not really a new thing. Um, you know, but I, I found it interesting that the DOJ launched a criminal investigation into Tesla last week. You know, coincidentally, you know, the, the week of the closing of the Twitter deal um, mm -hmm. into Tesla's, you know, full safe driving or full self-driving capabilities. So I thought that timing was a bit more than suspect, that the week the Twitter deal closes, the DOJ, DOJ launches not a civil investigation, a criminal investigation, hmm. you know, with potential jail time uh, for uh, Tesla executives. Yep. Can I can I just ask everybody if they have their shot glasses ready so I can say civil war now? There you go. Should have should have, should have given you a second. Um, we have this tweet from Chris Murphy. He says, today I'm requesting the Committee on Foreign Investment, which reviews acquisitions of U.S. businesses by foreign, foreign buyers to conduct an investigation into the national security implications of Saudi Arabia's purchase of Twitter. He already had the stake in Twitter. And the reason why I bring up those magic words is because when the Democrats overlook or defend things like foreign influence in, in our social media platforms, when it favors them and then seek to weaponize the U.S. government or the DOJ, when, when all of a sudden that power shifts, we can't function that way. It's not, it's not possible. 
for this country to exist if one political party is actively weaponizing law enforcement and the weight of the federal government to target their political rivals. And that's the only way it ever goes. Eventually, confidence shatters. And it doesn't have to be civil war like people charging at each other. That's not how the first civil war started. It can be a peaceful divorce. Would you consider what Gandhi, later. what Gandhi did with India, a, a civil war, when they just stopped saying, sorry, Britain, just pa- we're passive disobedience. We're not following. It could anymore. be that. My, my beef with the national divorce crowd, I'm, I'm open to that concept, but I think that fundamentally misunderstands the nature of the radical left. They, they're never going to let red states just go off and do their own thing. The left, they, they get off on rubbing your nose in it. They get off on lording it over you, it, it, as we're seeing well, now. Like they, they, I mean, like just look at the, I mean, it, it, one example out of many. I mean, look at, um, you know, look at the, the way that the, the um, you know, gay pride movement has evolved over the past 20, 30, 40 years. You know, it started as, you know, just, you know, do what you want in your own bedroom to civil unions, to gay marriage, to the pride movement, to transgender, to grooming children. It's about rubbing it in the faces of their political enemies. And so yeah. I just, I think that the concept that we're going to have this uh, very civil national divorce, I, I think that's a bit naive. Nothing civil, but but at the same time, I agree with your point. There, they are, there are status that love to tell people what to do. But when you have a centralized, big federal bureaucratic government, you have a vessel to allow them to do that. And I think we're seeing the results of that. And I think we're seeing such... Uh, you know, uh, divisiveness, uh, so many people fighting each other because of other people pushing their ideas onto other individuals. That's why I think a decentralization, a, a moving away from a big federal government and enforcing state governments could be something like a peaceful divorce that could eventually happen in a way where it's not really a divorce, but at the same time, we don't have other people forcing ideas onto other people because there's no vessel in order to do it adequately. And that's why I would always argue because I am for, uh, you know, a, a you know, a peaceful divorce, but a, a peaceful divorce in a way that doesn't rely on the federal government telling states what to do, states deciding for themselves what they should be doing themselves, a limited federal government. Regarding this like Saudi, this Saudi uh, news, so this is the same investment, Saudi investment that was in Twitter before yep. the acquisition? Yep. And so here's what happened. This guy had a stake in Twitter. Elon went to existing major shareholders and said, Will you keep your stake in so that I can acquire this company and turn it around? At first, he was like, nah, get out of here. Then he was like, okay. This is, by the way, the same Saudi prince that has an investment with tens of millions of dollars with Bill Gates. Why is it, <laughs> why is it Bill Gates being invested by, investigated by the federal yep. government with his Saudi Arabian collusion, especially with his Chinese collusion, especially with his energy companies, especially with his nuclear companies and his, uh, you know, technology that's helping the Chinese build uh, new weapons. Why isn't he being investigated for that? That that there's a lot more uh, at stake with that than than Elon Musk having a, a platform where people could now finally talk to each other. There's a big difference between the two, and obviously this is a, a clear action just to try to hurt Elon Musk here. Exactly. I mean, if you want to outlaw all foreign investment in American companies, yeah, let's have that conversation. Mm. But it, it's the selective enforcement that Senator Murphy, I mean, obviously, they're just they're trying to, um, you know, attack a political enemy. As they see, Musk is now a political enemy of the left. Do you think it would be righteous to ask the Saudi prince to rec- recuse himself from the stock, stock holdings of the American companies? I mean, in general, you think that's a wise move? He's invested in a lot of things in the United States, by the way. Right. And I mean, yeah. are we going to single out this one guy? Yeah, I don't want to single I mean, out I, this I, one I, guy. I would say the Chinese. I mean, like, there, there is no universe in which the Chinese Communist Party should have any stake in American companies, period. American farmland, American companies. Like, we should treat them the way we used to treat the USSR. You know, during the Cold War and before that, there was zero, essentially zero trade relationship between the American government and the American marketplace and the Soviet marketplace. I think there could be some trade, but probably a lot of sanctions. Well, are uh, they an enemy or not? I mean, that's a decision right. we have to make. Especially with the Uyghur camps. That's yes. why I think, there's, you know, my, my fear is that sanctions could eventually lead to escalation, but do we just ignore? That's that's a tough thing. you got the interventionist versus anti-interventionist, and the lightest form of it is, is still like, hey, you're doing a thing we don't like, so we're going to sanction you. But I'm telling you, in Arkansas, you know, like rural, deep red, you know, God's country, Arkansas, we have a lot of, you know, Chinese-owned land in our state. We have a lot of Chinese, uh, a lot of Chinese uh, oligarchs and, and Chinese government investment in our state. We had a, uh, a, a Chinese native who was a professor at the University of Arkansas who was convicted of espionage on behalf of the CCP. I mean, it's the University of Arkansas. Let, let, let me ask you, why should any American citizen have to compete with the finances of Chinese oligarchs? 
Let, if, if you're in Arkansas, if you're in any state and you want to buy a plot of land to start a business, raise a family, why are you competing in the market with a foreign country? It's a no brainer. I mean, like, that shouldn't even be a debate. Yeah. But like, but again, like the, the free market, you know, we just we, we, we take these things to the logical extreme um, when it makes no rational sense. I feel like if a guy in like 1989 was found committing espionage against the United States, he was a professor. A yes. Chinese was he a Chinese national? He was a Chinese national at the University that's, of Arkansas. That would have been that's, global. Yeah, that would have been like sentence. global news. It would have been on. Let's just got massive very little news coverage. Very if they little wanted coverage. to create animosity towards the Chinese, which right now I don't think they want to create animosity towards the Chinese. It seems like they're very in cahoots that they want to sell Taiwan to the Chinese. Which, by the way, you could always sell Eastern Ukraine to the Russians if you really want to go deep, uh, and just kind of peacefully sell out. I don't know. Maybe I don't think when that it's as simple it's better as better than that. conflict. So I, I've always war, I I've always been concerned about the Saudi prince's stake in Twitter. The difference between then and now is then you had a public company where he was he was pushing his influence. Now you have Elon in full control. There is still a question of whether or not this Saudi prince is saying to Elon, like, I gave you some of this money, so I expect favor or something like that. So the funny thing is, look, I don't trust this Democrat to actually have a legitimate investigation, but I think we should know exactly to what degree this Saudi prince has influence on Twitter. Well, did Elon not pay the $44 billion then? He got he got debt financing. He had other stuff. Uh, so this uh, uh, Saudi prince had this like nearly two billion piece of Twitter. He said, hold on to that, but give me control of the company. Ba- basically like loaning Elon. A, uh, basically, he might get a board seat of, of some kind. You know, that he, he's, well, he's well Elon made himself the sole board member for, I guess. for now. For, for right. now. He, he said that's he, temporary. Yeah. He tweeted today that it's not going to be for long that he is just a sole guy in charge here right i wouldn't want that pressure either sure but and and that's a question like i mean should we allow a foreign national to be you know a a board member of even an american private corporation i mean that's i mean that's it are are we serious about this or not i don't i don't think it's i don't think it's wise to to have foreign nationals if they can't run for office to own our social networks Mm -hmm. that we use probably more than especially how we've just demonstrated they're not even like free enterprise private companies anyway they're right. they're federal right. government proxies yeah are you against african-american owned businesses like twitter <laughs> uh, ian is that what you're trying to say here is that what you guys are trying to say you caught me you caught me no i, I fully support african-american owned businesses i like think twitter. it's i think it's a it's 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 a very it's complex, a tough, it's, I, it's, so a, complex. it's a very complex landscape it's not easy i'm not saying it's easy i'm all for the free market but essentially we don't have a free market we have socialism no. for the super rich we have government intervention with tax incentives with with subsidies with with them giving money from the poorest people and giving it to the biggest corporations that pay off the politicians so we don't have a free market system if we did, I would think that this system would, of course, fix itself naturally uh, with incentives and, and better business practices and better competition. But we don't have any of that. They, so I think before doing any before making any laws, first, we got to get the government out of business and then business will fix. There's itself. no real free market. It's a double speak term. Like it's always been controlled either by the people with the money or the government. Not when are, Andrew Jackson ruled, though. Well, it was probably the oligarchs at that point, like the Vanderbilt. No, there's, there's, I mean, robber barons. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. You they know. call it free market to appease the masses, and they're like, "Don't worry, it's free." But when you realize what's happening, it's controlled by the. But, well, but, the but, same with communism, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but look, sure. look, look, look. The idea of a free market is, I, I don't think anyone. If you believe in a utopian view of things, you're probably wrong. But in the general sense of a free market, it means that someone from the lowest, lowest class can find a way to make money trade and eventually become the upper echelon and gain significant control over that system. So it's 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 upward mobility in a system. As opposed to uh, like a centralized caste. market. Yeah, or a caste system. Yep. Caste yeah, whenever right. you have the government not involved in private business, businesses expand, but also quality of life expands. But whenever the government centralizes uh, a lot of the stuff, as we've seen throughout history, this is this is not always the case, but, but correlation historically says Less government, more economic freedom, more prosperity for human beings. Mm-hmm. And then the opposite of that is also true historically. Correct. Because the free market, I mean, really all it does is just harness, you know, human nature. You and know, and you people's people ability their, to, to fix their problems. People acting yep. in their own self-interest. Yes. And really what I, like, I'm not attacking the free market per se. I'm attacking people arbitraging the system, you know, gaming it to essentially be, you know, rent-seeking behavior. I mean, that, that's, what, that's what these people are doing by centralizing power and gaming the free market to their own advantage. That's what I'm attacking. But they're yeah. not gaining a free market. They're going to the government and be like, we want to make sure we have no liability when we give you this product. Uh, we want to make sure that no one could sue us if we hurt people when, we, when you help us 
promote for us and do our PR in making sure people take our product. That's not a free market at all. No, that's an aberration. It would originate with like two guys selling apples and they're like, we're going to compete. Whoever wants to buy my apples at a cheaper price will do this. Then eventually the two two apple sellers get together and they collude and they're like, yo, let's set the price of apples. So then the government comes in, they're like, no, we need a free market. We're going to make sure no one violates the law. And then the government sets the laws and sits there as an arbiter. And, except yeah. now what you're saying, they're like giving people subsidies. And Not saying, just that. The federal government is selling a product for the benefit of big pharma. Selling it. <laughs> yeah. Shilling yeah. it. Well, and, doing, back, and, and, the, and then using their monopoly of violence in a way to get protection no matter what happens in the scenario. any liability. Any liability, which is crazy. That's not I, a free I, market. I, guys, I just want to give a shout out, considering the episode and the subject matter, to all of the uh, feds who are watching and what up, see thing. <laughs> and uh, feel free to, you know, set the record straight. If, if this stuff is not correct or whatever, you know, you guys can uh, send emails and, and, and send information. Uh, Project Veritas, I'm sure, would be really interested to hear what's really going on behind the scenes. So uh, thanks I for I bet watching. a lot of people are out of control in their heads. Like, what do we do? What do we? I want to preserve American constitutionalism. We are globalizing. And it's happening don't. like a snowball. And they're like, what do we do? Do I just go along with what we're, what's already been in place? Like, are we... Are we coagulating with the Chinese, becoming an uber state. They they don't believe in the Constitution. They believe that this country was founded not in 1776, but in 1619. They believe a whole bunch of insane historical manipulations, lies, misinterpretations to justify their weird cult. That's the scary thing. So when they're like, in this, in this, uh, in the meeting report from the story from The Intercept, they're saying things like people lack critical thinking skills these days, and that's a problem. It's funny because these people writing it are the example of those who lack critical thinking skills. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself what the next step in your actions is? Like you do a thing, what happens next? They clearly don't know. They don't think about it. They just think they're smarter than you. They, they read garbage fake news, believe it. And then they say, how come none of these people believe the garbage that I believe? Oh, they must be stupid. I know. Let's censor information and, and, and manipulate cons- the public opinion. These people are just not smart enough. It's that it's that quote. I always forget who the guy is, but he said something like, if the idea is that people aren't smart enough to govern themselves, so a smarter person, you know, needs to control them. What makes that person smarter than anybody else? Same problem. Well, it's the old C.S. Lewis quote. I mean, he, he said, I'm butchering it, but he essentially said, I don't fear the tyrant who wants to torture me. I fear the tyrant who wants to do something for my own good. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what the left is really doing, because I think deep in their hearts, you hook them up to an EKG lie detector. They would tell you they're doing this for our own good. They're censoring this for our own good because we lack their critical thinking skills that they have in spades. And so that's what's so terrifying is because I think obviously there are some who are you know sadistic and just want to, to hurt people. But I think there is a large portion of the left that are truly doing this from in their own work perspective, a sense of justice or a sense of you know do-gooderism. And that that to me is so insidious because in their hearts, they think they are helping you by crushing your freedom. That's look, the low level at, guys, in my opinion. But, I think there's sociopaths on top that true, are truly calling the shots. But that's, yeah, a lot, but that's a lot. It's an army of low level guys. Bloomberg said, tax the poor. You guys remember this? Yep. In that video, he said, because they're too stupid, I'm paraphrasing, but too stupid to know it's good for them. So if we take their money from them and then tell them what they can buy, they'll be better off. Like when he, when he taxed, sugar, taxed sugary drinks. Right. You know, it's, every, look, I think sugary drinks are really bad for you. Do I think people should be allowed to have them? Sure. The problem is a culture where people understand, don't drink a liter of cola with your burger. And, but Bloomberg's solution is, no one should like tax them, punish them for doing it. That's the, the, the dystopian authoritarian I- ideology of these people. Now you see him and his ilk and how they, they take to the rest of these platforms. They think, you know what? I'm smarter than you, so I'll be in control. And the reality is they're not. They're not. And that's how they would approach national divorce in my mind. They would say, we can't let them go their separate ways because we have to help them. We, 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 they would just go harm themselves or harm others. I think there are a small percentage of people that need to be guided that if they see two opposing views that they'll they'll fall for it. But most a lot there's a huge amount of people that are discernible that can tell like you give me the Hunter Biden story and the evidence that shows not well they they those people I think actually wanted to to hide that story. But I, I they did. There was polls showing that it would it would have swayed and impacted the election. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 was, like it, it was yeah, it was a decisive censorship. Yeah, it would have changed our, our current political landscape. 
So this is the manipulation of public perception and support. The government going to big tech. And, and you, look, let me just come on, guys. You know, they're going to the media. I can tell you this definitively. Yeah. How about this? I was in Antalya, Turkey, I think is the name of the uh, of the city. Is that is that it is? Someone want to check, look it up. It's like the it's like a uh, Russian resort town, I guess. And um, I was there with the guys from Vice. We are hanging out at, uh, they were doing a, a talk. It was all these rich people. It was an organization called WPP. What is it like? Wire and Plastic Products, something like that. Who They own a major portion in all of these companies are around the world. And uh, the CEO of Vice explained how after they went to North Korea, they got a call from the State Department and they had a conversation. They talked about all this stuff. I don't think any, he, he said, any, uh, Shane said anything about them telling them what to report on, but they're, they're in direct communication over the stories they're doing. And he said something like he told them, like, you got to talk to this guy in North Korea because he was Western educated. And there's like an opportunity. So look, man, birds of a feather flock together, rich and powerful. It doesn't matter if you're in government, it doesn't matter if you run a big company, powerful elites want to hang out with powerful elites. That's why they have big conferences every year and they all hang out with each other in secret. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, the story that we read in the beginning of today's broadcast, extremely important and, and, and really should make people aware of the larger manipulation that the government is conducting behind the closed doors. But if they're doing this to big tech social media, what, is, what do you think they're doing to the corporate media? What do you think? I'll, 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 yeah. tell, I'll tell you. Yeah. You may think your favorite reporter is actually a CIA agent or an FBI agent with the DHS. Mm, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. The way it works is there will be a reporter, young, 24, fresh out of college, gets a job writing for like a blog and they're doing, you know, blog articles or something. Then all of a sudden they publish this big scoop. Their bosses are like, whoa, how'd you get this story? And they have a source. Within a few years, they go from having only a few thousand followers on Twitter to reporting on major breaking stories about Russia, about social media manipulation, Russian disinformation, seemingly just dumping evidence appearing on MSNBC and these other channels. All of a sudden they say, look, we know that Donald Trump did this, that, and this, fueling the Russiagate narrative. The reality is there's a young journalist who is stupid and government actors and agents say, hey, I'm going to be a source for you. Take a look at this story. And then the young journalist gets all excited. Whoa, this is a huge scoop. They go to their boss. I got a source in the government who just gave me this document. And they go, whoa, that's an official U.S. government document. How did you get that? I have a source. How much money do you want? Next thing you know, they're being put on TV. They're getting a big salary bump. And they're major stars in news organizations. Why? Because government a actors choose them to be their conduit for releasing the stories they want released. It, and, it, and it's not just like that. It, it's a lot more insidious, especially when you look at the 1975 church committee meetings that literally talked about how the intelligence agencies were at the head of the major broadcasting companies deciding what stories they were going to cover and not cover. They were inside of the newsroom. There was another famous journalist award winning uh, German reporter who worked for some of the biggest publications in the world, Udo of Ketty, who came out and said, essentially, they would send me articles that I would just put my name on that they would write for me. I was essentially just regurgitating what the intelligence agencies wanted me to say. He died under, of course, mysterious circumstances. But mm -hmm. but, but but again, this shows you that that the, the, the government has the corporate media, and it's obvious. You look at their reporting. It's not reporting. It's just an establishment press release. They're not reporting on anything. They're, they're essentially trying to set up mind control in a way that works to their benefit. And that is clear as day when you watch the corporate media. It's not as clear on social media, but it's becoming clearer by the day, when, especially with the big reveal that we just found out about right. today when it came to the DHS. Hard segue. We got to talk about San Francisco and Paul Pelosi, because this one I was reading so much stuff about. For those that aren't familiar, Nancy Pelosi's house was broken into. Paul Pelosi, her husband, it's like two in the morning or whatever. He's in his underwear. Some guy apparently breaks in. They get into a fight. Now, a whole lot of information comes out. Information's changing. Everybody's trying to figure out what's really going on. The first story was that like cops showed up and an unknown man let him in. And then they see, you know, Paul Pelosi's fighting over a hammer with this guy who then beats him. Then they arrest the guy. People are so 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 here's what it breaks down to. On the left, they say this guy posted QAnon conspiracy theories and he was a radicalized Trump supporter. On the right, they're saying his house, and this is true, has a pride flag, a BLM flag, and like a, a Unite Against Hate sign in the window. And the neighbors say they were like hippie nudist hemp smoke hemp weaving leftists. So there's that story. The right that I'm seeing the memes is that 
The guy who attacked Paul was a gay prostitute. The glass on the door was broken from the inside, so the glass went outside. And that Paul Pelosi called the police and said he was a friend. I think both of those stories go a little too far. I think it's fair to say we don't know exactly what happened, and it's probably what, what they're saying about this guy being a Q cultist. I don't believe. He was a registered Green Party guy. But for, for, before we get into it, I just want to say a couple of things. The reason why I think Paul Pelosi said he was a friend, if you listen to the police report, uh, the, the 911 dispatch call, you wake up in the morning, some guy breaks in your house. He's not immediately attacking you. He says, where's Nancy? What do you do? Do you say, start screaming and swinging at him? Well, if you're 82. So the story apparently is that he went to his bathroom where his phone was and then called the police. My assumption is that he told the guy, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Just wait right here. Call the cops. I, 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 you know, hey, there's a guy in my house. And the cop probably said, do you know who he is? And he goes, no. And they said, OK. And then Paul goes, he's a friend. He's waiting for my wife because you've got a crazy guy. Sitting, you know what I'm saying? Crazy guy sitting in front of you. I don't think Paul said to the police, to the police mm-hmm. on the phone. Hi, I just want to let you know there's a guy I don't know in my house and he's a friend I'm waiting for my wife. I think the police asked him. He said he probably said, hey, there's a man in, in my house. He's a friend. He's waiting for my wife. The cops probably said, do you know this man? And he said, no. So that this guy didn't hear what he was saying. I think that's entirely plausible. Why is the glass on the outside? Because the guy breaks it in and then pulls the glass out to reach in and get the door handle. I don't know. Now, I think the story is not doesn't completely make sense. This guy was a leftist. So the story about him being a QAnon cultist doesn't seem to make sense. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, did you, the official police reports say that Paul called him a friend on the phone with the cop? Yes. Uh, I don't think ever if there was a break in that you would tell the police your friend is over. If a crazy person broke in your house and started telling you, Ian, that you needed to help him right now to stop the gnomes who stole your spoons. And you said, would you would you be like, let, let, let me call the police and they'll get us on. The no, phone. no, would, I'd, I'd turn the fan on in the bathroom. Like, There's a psychopath in my living room. Like, I maybe wouldn't, I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't lie the, to the cops lock if the I needed door help. to lock the door to the bathroom close it there there's there's also a couple things that make you kind of wonder what's going on here the pelosi's are some of the richest people in the world and some of the most powerful and influential people in the world that have had their home targeted before by political activists and they had no security they had no security they had no one they it was, had no it was their officers. decision that they they they, yeah. they intentionally like refused security yeah that's, that's what they're that, saying yeah, yes that's that's absolutely just mind-boggling and and especially after really the up. congressional I know, I know. if you're doing something shady like like they do in house of cards which uh by, by the way uh bill clinton said is uh 99 accurate um maybe then i would understand that but there's also another dis- uh, another thing that happened here specifically with the political reporting that police told them that there was an unknown person that let them in Politico is now reporting that this is a baseless claim when they originally reported on it. Now, now I want to say I want to say this, guys. All of this, the whole story, something doesn't add up. That's mm. clear as day, right? Yeah. It is a good point. If he was able to go into his bathroom and close the door, but where his phone was charging, we don't know why. I mean, and where's the body cam footage? I mean, sure, these, but, but but it's 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 early, it's early, right? Here's what I want to say, though. I want to say I want to say this. I think the gay prostitute narrative is the trick, is a trick. Because once everyone starts posting memes about this crazy story about a leftist gay prostitute, it makes any regular person be like, Get out, what? Yeah. Get out of here. It's ridiculous. A break-in sounds plausible. They're trying to turn the story for, about a break-in into a QAnon far-right cultist. So I don't know. I don't know for Wasn't sure. Wasn't the story that the guy that broke in was screaming about Nancy? Like, I'm, I'm, where's Nancy? Lies. I want Nancy. That to me sounds like I found the guy's passport in the wreckage on 9-11. It fell out of the flaming ball of airplane and landed mm-hmm. on the ground. This proves that he was in the plane. You're like, what kind of psycho story is that? Passports don't <laughs> fall out of burning explosive rubble like that. Well, uh, and also, they don't prove anything if they did. And and he just just. Having someone tell me that a guy screamed something political is like, that just sounds like well, a red herring. Well, Cass Sunstein, Obama's disinformation czar, openly talked about how they need to spread fake conspiracy theories in order to make the legitimate conspiracy theories look bad. Exactly, he also talked yeah. about the importance of infiltrating 9-11 uh, family members who were victims of the attacks that happened in New York City in order to, of course, send in more propaganda, more disinformation in order to confuse everyone and make everyone look bad who were legitimately asking questions. This is, this, is, this is what I'm saying, right? It, the story can be something much simpler than people are making it out to be. It could be that Paul Pelosi was doing something embarrassing with a local guy who was a leftist. Maybe they were friends. Something bad happened and they're trying to cover it up. There's two ways you do it. 
The guy was a Q cultist. And then you get the right to push the most absurd story possible that no one would ever believe. And here we go. I'm seeing all the memes that are like, Paul Pelosi's gay, gay lover is trending. And I'm like, that's how they get you. He was driving this, drunk a couple years, a year ago or something. And who was like, the guy who was with him when he was driving his car drunk? Oh, I don't know. Was there so, was a guy with him? Yeah. That, so, so here's my point. For all we know, this guy could have been delivering drugs. That's substantially more, more reasonable and plausible. If you go to a regular person and say, do you think high profile members of the government do drugs? They'd be like, <laughs> Yes. Do you think powerful CEOs and executives do drugs? Of course. they. It's, a mo- it's like a movie trope. They're doing coke all the time. Do you think it's possible that a drug deal could go bad, a small one? Like a guy's dropping off at two in the morning, some blow or something? Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's happened. Okay. So do you think it's possible this could be something like that? Yeah, maybe. But the guy was reportedly a Q cultist. I'm like, what do you think is more plausible? That one of the most secure places in the country, the third in line for the presidency, had no security and a fringe conspiracy theorist was able to break in and the government didn't know about it, or a dude was trying to buy some blow and it went bad. Right. And there, it, to me, it's, it's clear the, the social condition that's going on. Everything the left does right now is blamed on, you know, MAGA terrorism, white supremacist terrorism. They're trying to, I mean, if you, any, uh, you know, four-star general from the military or, you know, any corporate CEO, you know, whatever it is, they're all going to tell you in a congressional hearing, you know, the number one threat to America these days is MAGA yeah. terrorism, white supremacist terrorism. Right. And again, like, I, I think if there's going to be an explanation for this, you know, incident, whatever it is, you know, that's their go to card. And I just think yeah. they're they're playing that card every single time because they're conditioning everyone to to anticipate that, yeah. um, you know, that eventuality. I, I do believe the likely scenario is that what, kind of what you were saying, Tim. That it, that it was like some sort of late night rendezvous that that got heated or something like that. And they probably and, and, knew each other. And and it, it could be gay prostitution. I just think that is a more shocking and difficult to believe story. And it's really the worst case scenario that Paul was doing some blow with some dude that got out of hand. And then he grabbed a hammer, I guess. Like, get out. Well, it's time for were, you to leave. And the guy's like, I'm not leaving, Paul. We're doing another line. And, and there Paul's was something like, about, oh, <laughs> now. <laughs> there was something about a wellness check. Like, the cops weren't even called there originally due to the disturbance. It was a wellness check on Paul as what? part of his probation. Yeah, I mean, that was in the original oh. reporting was that they were they were called there on a wellness check. Was that from was that from when he got caught drink driving is at the yes the at 2 a.m at 2 a.m cool so, so, they so, stopped... so hold on w- no, no double check me on this because okay. that was that was the yeah. original the, the original story i heard was that the cops were there doing a wellness check and then that escalated because the hammer didn't come out like the the, the in the original political article they said that paul was not attacked with the hammer until the police arrived it right. wasn't it wasn't like they broke up a hammer attack it's mm-hmm. like the police showed up and then the struggle over the hammer ensued. That was what I heard. So like, Dis- sh- I got dispatcher Heather Grimes had sent something was wrong with the situation and ordered officials to conduct an expedited wellness check on the home. Look at this. The glass is broken. It, it, so the glass on both the outside and the inside. People need to understand it. I'm seeing a lot of people say the glass on the outside. You can see the glass is clearly inside and outside. Yeah, you could have pulled it out as he was breaking right, it right, open. Right, right, right. So uh, I, I know a dude who once kicked a glass window. Your foot, his foot went through it because it was safety glass, and when he pulled it out, he raked it out. Oh, and he, geez, I knew a guy did with his arms, and then he just shredded his yep, arms. His Do not yank shredded. your arms out if you go through a window. Stay there and stay calm. Yep. Mm-hmm. But anyway, glass comes out the other side too. So this is true. They were conducting a wellness check. So, so they say, uh, "quote What's going on?" Uh, let, let me read. They say Paul Pelosi managed to call nine one one and alert the dispatcher to his dire situation with, without his eventual attacker even knowing. Pelosi, the husband, blah blah blah. The alleged attacker, David DePapi, didn't realize Pelosi had dialed his phone or understood that Pelosi was speaking in code. What's going on? Why are you here? What are you going to do to me? Pelosi, uh, Pelosi, uh, Pelosi, Pelosi allegedly said in order to alert 911 to the emergency situation. See, so this wellness check wasn't random. That's what I thought happened. He didn't make a phone call and say, hello, there's a man in my house. I don't know him, but he's my friend. He was speaking in code. So the people don't believe this. There were tons of viral stories that have been around for a long time of women who order pizza and they'll say something, they'll call 911 and say, I'd like to order a large pepperoni pizza. Ma'am, this is 911. Yes, I understand. Ma'am, you're calling 911. You're, it's not a pizza place. Yes, I do understand. I would like to order a large pizza. And the dispatcher says, are you in danger, ma'am? Yes. And is this someone threatening them? Yes. And they're like, okay, can you tell us what's going on? Or are you in danger? I'm sorry. I don't know. And they'll go, okay. And then the police show up. You Like if you've got some crazy person standing in front of you, and you dial 911, you can't go, help, police, quick, he's here, because then you die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It could be anything. But I'll tell you this. At the very least, going for the most, like, circuitous story 
Paul Pelosi was having a secret gay rendezvous. It got out of hand. The police showed up. It's like, yeah, I don't believe that. I also don't believe the political propaganda. You can believe it if you want. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, tell that to one of your normie friends and see how quickly they dismiss you and think you're insane. Yeah. Stay away from from non-factual proved proven things right now. You got it. You got it. That's why I'm always like, look, sometimes the conspiracies are true. Like the DHS story we have right here. We've long had this evidence. Mm -hmm. But if before these documents were released, you even now it's probably hard. You go to someone and say, the government is colluding with big tech. We've got these th- this from this lawsuit. People are going to be like, yeah, you're, you're crazy. Now we have The Intercept reporting, a leftist publication. It's still going to be hard because the story sounds so nuts. Right. I'm just saying it may be true. You just got to be careful how you're presenting it because it sounds ridiculous. And it may be. And I recall the Andrew Gillum story. You know, that was uh, Ron DeSantis' uh, gubernatorial opponent in 2018 in Florida. And, you know, there was the story there where, you know, he oh, yeah. was he was found, you know, in a drug-induced coma. On Naked. A- yeah, naked, you know, having done all kinds of drugs, you know, with a gay escort. And, you know, if those, if the photographic evidence of that rendezvous didn't exist, that would all be dismissed as a right-wing conspiracy theory. Mm. So, I mean, that's why it's so important. And like, then the DHS and the FBI would go to the big tech social media companies being we like, you got to censor this right now, make sure no one talks about this. If they do, they get uh, kicked off. So it's plausible that right now the media is just trying to get their story straight, that they're just, that's why Politico is like contradicting their own reporting. Like they're just trying to get the narrative right you know, they got. They say they got body camera footage. New York Post. Well, they right. say it's it's in it's caught on police body cam. So release it. Yeah. So yeah. where is it? But you know they're gonna they're gonna be like, well, you know, Paul's in his underwear and got to blur it out. Blur, blur, yeah, blur it, out. it out like Andrew Gillum. I, I want to see. That. <laughs> I want to hear it more than anything. Right. Uh, okay. It's starting to sound a little less nefarious now that he called the cops. Spoken code. That's exactly what I room. see yeah. when I when I heard the dispatch call and they said he says he doesn't know him but he's a friend. You know, and he's waiting for his wife. And I saw everybody being like, why would he say he's his friend? And I'm, and I'm like, it's like those pizza phone calls where the woman calls and says, like, me, and, you know, we, we want pizza and they're yeah. calling 911. He, he called in code. It's believable. I, I, I still think there's something really off about them not having security. It doesn't make sense. Right. And the initial report of a third person they're saying was, just, was a misunderstanding. Another mm-hmm. person was there. Come on, dude. Yeah, like we have security and, and, and we don't we're like one millionth of, of the value of the Pelosi's. Like, yeah, seriously. You know, yeah, for real. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It but makes like, no sense. To, to me, yeah, it was a conscious act by them to not have security present that raises a lot of red yeah. flags. Or they had it and they're, they're saying they didn't to facilitate a story. They, they, they hmm. just had the people in. They're like, don't worry about it. I know the guy. And then the guy's in there. And right. Not okay. We didn't even have security. Yeah. It's their budget. I, I, I think, you know. If I was going to believe in there was a, there was a conspiracy or anything, it'd probably be that it was a break in. Like the "Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy?" stuff sounds way too much like the fake AOC story. Where is she? Where is she? Yeah, <laughs> shut up! That never happened. Like I'm, I'm sure the cop walked and said, "Where is she? Where is she? She's in the bathroom, uh, ma'am. You need to be evacuated." And she's like, oh, "They're coming to get me." And then she lied about when it happened to make it seem like the January six rioters were coming for her when her story took place a full hour before the Capitol was even breached. Well, not in the Capitol, in the uh, building. From yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then not even in the, yeah. in the same building. In adjacent, yeah. I want to fire off some healing love to Paul. Recover from the uh, the head trauma, brother. Yeah, man, I hope he's okay. Like, it's a crazy story regardless. I hope that'll make him run for political office anytime soon. He's had a rough year. I mean, just like yeah. at, at baseline, he's had a rough year. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. self, uh, self-inflicted self rough year. Nancy, too. It's, this got to be stressful. Like, I, I would encourage you, Nancy. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be there. I think that she, a lot of people that are in Congress, they feel like if they leave, they failed. But at some point, you got to take care of yourself and your family and let us take care of the rest because we're here for you. I think it's like the Bear Bryant situation. I mean, he he resisted retiring in Alabama because he figured if he retired, he would die, which he did six months later. Like six months after he retired from coaching football, he was dead. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of these members of Congress, they're so old and ancient, <laughs> they, they don't want to die. And they, they, they figure that, hey, if I go retire, then that'll be it. It'll be in the grave. Because purpose Pe- keeps you alive. Yeah, sure. that's right. And yeah. work, too. People who retire, uh, I think retirement age is like the highest, most likely time of death. Absolutely. We should yeah, never. They could, they could keep working if they retire from Congress. Yeah, we shouldn't put humans in a position where they're 85 and feel like they can't stop being a representative. On, and, and, their, and their entire self-esteem and self-worth is wrapped up in that office Married itself. To it. yeah, totally. All right. I hope you guys are ready for some more bad news. This story is from Politico. Biden bashes oil sector for war profiteering and warns of windfall tax on profits. You know what that means, right? If they put a tax on the profits for gas companies, what do you think is going to happen? The price of gas is going to go up. 
Yeah, the company would try and to make like, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna punish them for price gouging all of you by charging them more money so they'll have be forced to increase the prices. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, people people you know need to understand gas is higher in some places than other places because of the gas tax of the government already taxing it. The government could make gas lower by just not taxing it, but now they're deciding we're just gonna tax it even more, which is absolutely ridiculous. I've heard that oil companies have been maintaining record profits. Uh Oil companies get record profits amid global crisis. It's what does August that mean? 11th. What, is it, what does that Let's mean, record see, profits? 55 billion this last quarter between and what's, BPX and, on Chevron, yeah, Shell, what, what and What about and Apple? What about Apple? No, 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 hold on, hold on. 55 billion in profit? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm, in, not, in I'm a not a fan if they're raking in the profits at a time of crisis, but hold on. What was their total revenue? Uh, what, what, was the, what was the gross revenue uh, to profit? And then last year and the year before, I want to I know their total profit to total gross revenue. You know why? Because of inflation. Yeah, right. So they could say it's a record profit. Yeah, because inflation is up 10%. So they got 5 billion more than they got last year. Yeah. Does that mean the buying power of their profit is the exact same, but the number is larger because Biden's because of Biden inflation? This uh, from The Guardian shows that Exxon made second quarter profits 17.8 billion, four times the year before. So their, their second quarter profits were four times uh, in one year. We did not have four times inflation. I have a feeling that these companies are spiking the deal that they're taking advantage of it for sure. Could I be. see Biden begging them to lower their prices on Twitter, and they're just like, we don't have to. But um, but it's maybe. not just these companies. It's also Saudi Arabia. It's also Russia. It's also a lot of other you know countries that produce oil. Plus, Biden shut down Keystone and banned fracking on certain lands. So if he really wanted to get things down, he could be increasing competition, and he's not. Absolutely. Yeah, if you really want to harm the energy companies, increase the domestic oil supply. And that's you right. know, increased exploration. That's reduced regulations. If you want to make them have fewer profits, then you know, increase competition. Yeah, exactly. Because if you add tax to the gas company taxes, and you can't make them set their price. I mean, can you legally in the United States make a company set its price? Price setting. That's no, very communist. You could do that that's in Venezuela <laughs> because yeah. it's a communist. State. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. referred to as price fixing. It wouldn't be legal. It's, and it's just that's what they did to toilet paper in Venezuela. Yeah, and that's Man. why you can't get toilet paper in Venezuela. I don't. I don't. I don't know a whole lot about Brazil's politics, but seeing you know Lula win made mm -hmm. me kind of worried because yeah. it, it's a lot of. I don't know, man. I don't know enough about politics to to say too much. It probably would not be fair for me to comment, but. Bolsonaro's out. He's, he's out. Yeah, he's out. And I look at stuff like this and I'm like, people were all like, Trump is bad. And then they vote for Biden. Biden's like, I'm going to make your gas cost 10 times as much. And here you go. Right. Well, Lula is another World Economic Forum member. So I'm, oh, I'm sure Brazil is going to be uh, you know, protecting the globalist policies uh, that, of course, are pushing the UN 2030 vision. So Russia's all, let me sell you our gas through the Mediterranean. United States and the United States is all, nah, nah. Can't nah don't don't compute nah and Russia's like yo let's be trade partners and they're like nah uh, uh, what nah mm, uh, like come uh, is this still people are afraid of communism like they're afraid and but Russia is Russia's not communist it's yeah. a federation and they're and the U S seems to be buddy buddy with China at least in, in a lot of regards I should I should say Democrats like Biden are which is fine I want to be trade partners with China and Russia I think the three countries can run the world together you know and then we'll spread American republicanism ideally they but they disagree with you. The Chinese okay. Communist Party is, is worried about American republicanism, so they want to crush it. So what do you do? I saw a video out of Brazil. Um, yeah, it, it could have been fake, but I think it was, it was true. There were multiple videos. I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was um, a recording of a major prison in Brazil of the prisoners celebrating as they received the news that this, you know, Lula, whatever his name is, uh, defeated Bolsonaro because they know that this guy is a left-wing radical. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a jailbreak justice type of guy. Yeah. And they know that their sentences are about to become a lot lighter. Yeah. There's allegedly yep. a lot of gang members um, in the favelas shooting off guns and celebrating as well. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Right. Right. That's, it, that's it, not a good and sign. The, not a good this, sign. And he was charged with, he was, he was convicted of corruption or something. It was like Correct. stealing millions yes. of dollars. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But look, man. It's par United. for the course down there, to, to be honest. But not just that. I mean, even in the United States, you have people who will vote for John Fetterman. Right. His brain oh, is is busted. And I feel bad for the guy, man, but he's not all mm -hmm. there. And there are people who vote for him. The same thing is true of Joe Biden. Yeah. There are people who hate you so much they would vote for a ham sandwich if it meant you suffered. That's a great point. And it also shows that the left, they, they view their political leaders as just merely vessels for their ideology. You know, that, you know, Joe Biden, I mean, Joe Biden is the commander in chief and everyone can see plain as day that he is mentally incapacitated. Doesn't matter. He's nope. just a, he's a vehicle. John Fetterman. I mean, he could be the ideal U.S. senator for the left. 
He's just, you know, he's an empty vessel. He can, he can, you know, he'll vote yay or nay the way they want to every single time. That's perfect for him. And, and that's just, that's, I think that's, that's a hard pill for many to swallow is that that's, that's where we are as a country. That's where our political system is. We have one party that in this cycle could potentially elect someone who is, you know, a walking VAERS report. Yep. Man, that's brutal. Fetterman, man, you know, he, he. And we can't talk about why he's in this condition. Can we? Well, we should, because he lived across well, the street well, from a steel mill. He's well, a, he, but we can talk about it on the after show okay. if you want to really get into it. Fair enough. But he's he, had, a, he had a stroke in May, and now he's... The, the timing of that was interesting. And, and he's unable to effectively communicate. And they argue that it's just his auditory processes, but I, he clearly can't speak. And they lied about that. Dude, I right. watched an interview in his house. It's echoing, booming echoes in his house, because it's just wide open. They have wooden floors. It's just constant sound just nailing him. He went, that sound messed that guy up. He right. took he took the steel mill from across the street, breathing in all that carbon. Oh, yeah. oh man, John. Well, well, people in this country are willing to vote for, as you said, empty vessels. But I, but I think it's, it's, it's not just that they're going to vote yay or nay as they want it. It's that they will they, they hold in their hearts the same level of hatred for you. Joe Biden going out on TV and saying the MAGA Republicans are an extremist threat. He hates you as much as all of his voters do. It's like their only policy is we hate you and we want you to suffer. That's it. Now, they'll argue that's what Republicans think. And there's probably a lot of Republicans that are, you know, probably do think that way. I don't know. I think Republicans are fairly bad in a lot of ways. But you sit down here and we talk with some of these various uh, politicians and they will articulate their positions about why they want to do what they're doing. And then you you take a look at the modern Democrat narrative and it's MAGA Republicans are evil. Right. It's like, well, when we talk about like child sex changes, we have very real real concerns. We can easily articulate what's wrong with it. They'll just say, but you're a racist. You're a bigot. You, you, you're transphobic. Like not even give you an argument. They just yeah. don't like you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and we on the right are so unprepared to deal with that ideology. They're not interested in debate. We, we wrap ourselves. We, I think we, we kind of make a, uh, a lower G God out of our intellect, out of our ability to rationalize. Totally. Whereas the, the opposition, they don't care about that. No. All they care about is crushing you. Yeah. And, you know, they, they don't care. Like, that's the whole Ben Shapiro thing. Like, Ben Shapiro, you know, will, will dazzle you with his intellect. But when you're, when you're looking, like, like th- their feelings don't care about your facts. Literally. Yep. So, exactly. so, so how, are, are you prepared to defeat that? More, more importantly, Ben Shapiro actively tries to have conversations with people he disagrees with and come to an understanding. And, and I refuse. respect that, but they don't care. Right. They don't care. They're going to vote for John Fetterman. Well, so... I think the best example is we will invite them to sit down here and express themselves and they will say no. Every single libertarian, traditional, like, disaffected liberal and conservative will say anytime, let me know when. But the Democrat left is nope, no I, dice. Sometime. And even, even when I talk to them on the street, they'll be like, uh, delete that. D- delete that recording. I, you, you can't use it. And it's like, bro, you're in public. You, you walked up to my camera. Yeah, that's not how it works. We've had, we've had a couple, so that happened to me, I told, I told the story, but we've actually had some instances for TimCast.com where people are like, I've changed my mind. And it's like, dude, you said in public in front of everyone what you said. Like, we, we, you walk up to us, we're filming it. You can't come later and be like, I revoke consent to being filmed. I'm not sure if you guys saw, it was a Matt Walsh, he was doing a speech and he, this young trans, I, it was a man, I, I don't know what gender the, the person was, but they were trans and they were, they were talking to Matt and like, I don't know what to do. You say these things, I'm upset and I don't want to put words in their mouths. You should watch the interview. It's great. And then Matt was like, I don't dis, I don't hate you. I love, I, I, I want the best for you. I'm angry with these pharmaceutical companies selling medicines for profit that haven't been tested and telling people that they're, that they're safe. This is the test run. I care deeply. You could see like he really cares about these people. Yes. That was an example of someone from the left expressing their emotions and someone from the right understanding and communicating in their language in an emotional way. Yeah. All, but also displaying some facts about the pharmaceutical companies. And, sure. And I saw that. Thing. That was very powerful. And, and you know, it's, it's a great example of, you know, the, 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 you, you can't have an ultimately you know, quote, free market, because that's a great example is these, you know, quote, gender transition, uh, you know, genital mutilation treatments. I say it's treatment, they're just barbaric procedures. In Arkansas, you know, we, we had a state law that was passed that would have outlawed them for minors. Uh, our Republican governor vetoed that legislation. We overrode Why? His, that's, there's, there's, that's the rub. You know, he mm-hmm. is a, you know, Republican governor of a deep red state, an R plus 30 state. This is what? Arkansas, and the Republican governor vetoed the legislation and um you know that that law got passed it was overridden that we, we overrode his veto in the legislature 
But that law, there was a big lawsuit, which is still ongoing. And, you know, the plaintiffs in that lawsuit trying to stop the law from being implemented, it was, you know, all the, uh, you know, medical associations, the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, Walmart, the Walmart Foundation, um, the Arkansas Chamber of Commerce, you know, like all these big, you know, entities, um, you know, I would just like the, the, the globalists, for lack of a better term, you know, they're against it. And so they that's... Say you can't say that word anymore now, remember? Who said that? So there was... This actually is... Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want to derail you, though. If you, want, if you want to finish your thought. No, no, that was really... It's, they, we're, 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 we're powerless right now to stop that from happening, even in deep red states. And that's, that's hard for us to swallow. It's they amazing. they started this campaign. That it actually started, I think, in like 2018 against Alex Jones, that globalist is anti-Semitic. And then people are like, but what do I say to describe someone who wants a one world government? And they're like, you can't. It's anti-Semitic. It's like, what are you saying about Jewish people? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I say internationalists. There's nationalists and there's internationalists. Internationalists care more for international relations and community and nationalists care more for their nation and, and, and country. I well, let's, name, let's, name calling in general is looked down upon. Don't but, call, but, don't but, slander but someone. Not, what else do you call a globalist than a globalist? It's not name right. calling. Yeah, it's, it's not name calling. It's a description of an ideology. I think globalist is a good term. I just use globalist. Yeah. But name calling people is like, eh. That let's, is. let's, let's, let's talk culture war. We have this from the New York Post. Twitter to start charging $20 per month for verification under new owner Elon Musk. Are you going to pay Tim? Yes. Oh, Mr. Moneybags. Tell me more. 20 bucks. But I, I've <laughs> talked about this a lot before. I think that uh, verification should be literally for the purpose of verifying users. So you know who I am. So there's no impersonators so that I can be like, this is my official account. Then Timcast News will also buy its verification and say, this is the official account of Timcast News so that you don't follow the wrong account. It's, right. it's easily there for you. And the other thing people don't realize is it's going to come with features. And I think I, I, I just think it's ultimately good that regular people can choose to sign up and then you know you're talking to a real person. Makes the platform way more valuable, in my opinion. Yeah, you want to pr you know put your money where your mouth is, and and right now Elon Musk and Twitter are promising some some really amazing things to combat a lot of the nonsense that we're facing. If if they backtrack on it, if the government defeats them, if if they don't, if if Elon doesn't keep his promise, I'm canceling my twenty dollars subscription. That's yeah. another way to vote with your dollar. Um, and and he also talked about uh, you know there's also rumors right now that he might bring back Vine soon. He tweeted about that it. he's going yeah, to yeah. allow Beast. cryptocurrency on the platform and allow people to, of course, uh, have end-to-end -end encryption. So he's promising a lot of good things that, that I think are interesting. So far, he, he's he's doing things that, that I, I, I think are good. I, 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 I can't really criticize him. He hasn't done everything I wanted him to do, but it's still early, but, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on here's, it. Here's the best part. Many of the woke Twitterati, these journalists, they don't have 10,000 followers, 5,000, 20,000, but they're verified. Meanwhile, there were people like James O'Keefe. They banned him and he had like a million something and he was not verified. Julian Assange, not verified. Mm -hmm. For these people, it's the only thing that makes them feel valuable or important. And Elon is going to rip it right out of their chests. And I want to see it. There are people that they're like, well, you know, I have a verified Twitter account with 5,000 followers. And I'm like, oh, yeah, buddy. So does my dog. My dog's verified. These people build their self-worth off of getting verified on Twitter, working for these big institutions and being prestigious. And Elon Musk is going to Kaliman, rip it right out from him. And then I'm gonna laugh the whole time because they stake their value in a little stupid icon on a social media platform. Ah. Thanks, Elon. I uh, went the other direction. I am not verified. I have no interest in you will asking, be. but I will only become verified if they ask me to become verified. That's okay. my goal with Twitter. Well, again, you're a free person. You can do whatever you want. And it, it's going to be interesting because this is a way to, to fight against the pressure that Elon Musk is facing from Bill Gates, the Washington Post, and a lot of people in the establishment that are calling for an advertiser boycott. Now, with this new system, yeah, boycott all you want. We don't care. We got people paying for, for the platform if they want to use it. I'm going to be paying for it. I want to use it, especially if he keeps his promises. He does it. I'm going to boycott it. That, that was my plan up until Elon bought it was I'm never going to ask to be verified. If they come to me and they're like, okay, hey, come get verified, Ian, I would do it. Now, this sounds like an upgrade of Twitter Blue. So this is just basically the paid version of Twitter. I kind of like yeah. it because if it offers a bunch of cool features like editing, longer tweets, things like that. Longer videos. It might be just be worth paying the 20 yep. bucks for. In that case, I would maybe consider doing it. And if there, it comes with verification, then... There's talk of it. longer videos. Right. Um, I do think, though, you know, I guess inversely, Twitter needs to be paying its top accounts 
for producing content or just do some ad share or you know yeah you just share some of the money you could pay so, them a so, percentage of the twitter blue income well or yeah right but based on like how many views do your tweets get or something like that it's always tough because then people will make inflammatory tweets maybe put legitimate fake news for the purpose of generating traffic but that's youtube right right so yeah. what do you do oh yeah yeah, so would you police it or would you just have, you know, just kind of a true like free for all? You allow the advertisers to advertise on who or what they want to. If they're offended by someone, you just simply give them the choice like, okay, I won't you be cannot, advertising yeah, with them. You can't advertise with them. Your, your content won't be shown with this person's content. He also, Elon also talked about having a, a platform where you decide your experience. So you could go into a kid's version of, of Twitter where, of course, everyone cares about your emotions. Everyone is there calling you by your pronoun and your gender. And then an adult version where West. people could actually have, you know, rational, real conversations conversations that don't need to play by certain rules a wild west and when you do that you open kind of uh, the pathway of individuals to kind of determine their own experience which i think is awesome and yeah. great you could uh, gamify the system i built a, a and then you can't say you can't have a person complain like i i, I can't i don't want to go on the kids playground then if you don't want the, to be in the adult <laughs> section go in, and go into uh, the yeah. little playground pit here on, on mines i built a gamification model for mines where you would basically get tokens for using the site you could use these tokens to buy or to hire avatars that you'll send out on missions and then every day you'll get a notification throughout the day if you click the notification it's like your hero found a sword if, if you're there if you don't click the notification he doesn't find it so you'll be like it'll create generate attention for the site and then when they come back from their mission you get a, a trophy that goes in your profile so if you want to turn on gamification mode is you there can a play and then that'd be a good way to integrate utility tokens well uh, let me just invert invert that on you is there a DD &D social media so, social no, but network, you could totally do that you could battle That's against friends and use tokens to empower abilities and stuff i would like 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 it's it's basically like a social media website but it's a DD &D game and then dude you could augment react do augmented D, D twitter like you could look at your friend and like have a turn-based game it'd be so fun I'd, I'd probably sign up for something like that it'd be wild and you could do, have it could be an overlay where you flip it on and then just turn it back off if you don't want it on or not i'm, I'm just saying like literally I, I'm, I bet someone's going to comment saying it exists but i'm saying like a website where you create a profile you you friend people and your profile is also a level leveling up character with notifications that like you can engage in scenarios and play games yeah that'd be fun hell yeah it'd be a fun game like it's it, I, there's got to be something like that. I don't know, but don't know. the model's built. So if you want to implement it, Elon, let me know. We just didn't have enough developers at Minds to put it up. It's like a it's like a social media MMO. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that'd be it's, fun. it's a good token sync because the thing about utility tokens and giving them out is you're making them. You need a way to to deflate the the currency. So it's a good way for people to put tokens back into the system. Right. Kids version. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Oh, That's Russell cool. Brand gave your I word tweet props yesterday on his YouTube segment. <laughs> I just started tweeting words like none of those broke the rules. I was like, I said, can I tweet naughty words now when Elon bought when finally closed the deal? And I just started tweeting words that are questionable, like I guess, for Twitter's rules or something. But I didn't, it's, it's like you can basically tweet most words without actually getting in trouble on YouTube. I mean, I mean, on, on Twitter. Mm. That's how most of these platforms work anyway. Have you seen more engagement in the past week or so? Well, I gained a bunch of followers. Yeah, I guess people are I, coming I've seen back. A spike too. I did as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, without tweeting very much, so. Yep. Yeah, I just think what happened with Twitter is that when they realized journalists were using it, that was their that was their core user base. They started yeah. pandering to them. It's their echo chamber. And then... That's how stories are generated. The reason... So Twitter talked about removing follower counts, retweet counts, and, uh, and making verification for everybody, and they just decided not to do it. And the reason? Because the journalists like the gamified retweet counts, like bragging about their follower counts... And they like the fact that the verification badge is a status symbol that's granted to you, yes. like knighthood. Yeah. So they would never give up on it. I think if Elon Musk strips all that away, uh, here's what I say. Elon should remove follower counts, remove retweet counts, put all those analytics behind the scenes. You can find someone's profile. You don't know how many followers they have. You can follow them if you want. You can see how many followers you have. The public doesn't see it. You tweet something out, they can retweet it if they want. No one can see how many retweets it has. Why? Why is the re retweet icon got a number on it? What's the point of that? It's for the, you, the user can use that number to inflate their own value if they want to get. You can an see it behind the scenes. Why is it being shown? So you're to the right. Public? You could. Yeah. You don't need to be public. It's not like I saw your tweet and need to know that it was also a part of you know ten thousand other accounts broadcast. It makes no sense. It's a, it's a it's a value symbol. Sure. The same thing with ratios. 
Twitter intentionally built the system for the quote unquote ratio. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to show me a number of replies. Right. Well, unless Just you want, show me the replies. Unless you want drama. Unless exactly. you want to see who got ratioed. Unless mm -hmm. you want to start controversy. And and I think these organizations have been doing that deliberately. They have been pushing, I think, a divide and conquer agenda that makes people hate each other and fight each other based on trivial differences that don't really matter in our lives. And I think at the end of the day, it, it wasn't an accident. I think the FBI, D, DHS is like, hey, we got to make sure that these people fight each other so they don't really see what's really happening to them. And that's a perfect way of doing that. And now we have the proof. The government has been controlling the big tech <laughs> social media companies. So it's fair to assert right now that they are the ones pushing for ratios, pushing for hatred, pushing for all the divisiveness and all the drama that, of course, captivates big tech social media. I just hope Elon's ready for the storm. I mean, it's just beginning. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're not going to let him just, you know, purchase yep. a piece of the cathedral, as you said the other day. I mean, that's he's got a piece of it now. And, and they're not <laughs> they're not just going to let that go quietly. You can't hold it. It's like the one ring. Elon you need to disperse it, melt Elon, it into dust. Oh. Elon knows who Michael Malice is. He needs to call up Michael and say, let's talk. Michael needs to give, start advising him on how to deal with a lot of this stuff. Yes. Decentralize the algorithm. You want all this stuff out of your own hands, Elon. You don't want to hold people's passwords. You don't want to hold people's names and addresses and, and stuff like that. Get an email, email verification. Keep it as, as baseline as possible and get that stuff out. Uh, like, uh, well, I'll, I'll go into more detail later. I think he's going to try and turn it into X.com, right? He made X yeah, holdings right. to, to acquire it. Into PayPal. He, right. He wants to make it the one app for everything, yeah. like WeChat. The American WeChat. And that's, that's kind of scary if you think about it. It's, I, I don't, look, there's a lot of good things coming from Elon, but I don't, I don't completely trust him. He's got business dealings in China. Right. Mm -hmm. I, is this necessarily going to be a good thing? If we, if, if we end up using Twitter, think about how bad Twitter is with censorship, and we're hoping Elon fixes it. It's still bad. Viva Fry got suspended for tweeting about the Paul Pelosi thing, which is BS. Yeah. Imagine you start using that for your payment processing and for everything, and the censorship never gets fixed. So I'm not entirely confident. It's like he's in a position like George Washington was after the revolution where he's the, the now he's the president and they want him to become king. People will be like, hey, just you be the one in charge. Don't do it, dude. You got to give up the power. He's got a part in the political prisoners. He has to unban a lot yes. of these people. But right. how is he going to deal with the Department of Homeland Security breathing down his neck being like, no, you're not. When so much of his businesses are dependent on government contracts. Mm. Yep. So SpaceX, especially. Point. Yeah. You know, they're going to so. come after him. They're going to punish him. Sure. You know, all the satellites that they're building. You know, sure. All and the his, tech that they're building. His kind of dalliance with transhumanism is is concerning as well. Yeah. You know, yep. with Neuralink and you know his business in China. It's 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 not a, you know, it, it's not a good guy. Bad He's guy skeptical situation. of everyone, obviously. But when it comes to the battle of ideas. He is pr he is proposing amazing ideas, yeah. important ideas that no one else is, and they're crucially important for our uh, existence right now. Agreed. He, so his battles against Bill Gates, his battles against depopulation, his battles against you know the 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 real things that are coming and and are going to be hurting humanity, I think are important. And you know I'm I'm still not 100 percent convinced. I'm still skeptical of him, but I think so far he's one of the best things we have right now when it comes to ensuring freedom of speech. No uh, human has that can handle that responsibility, though. You need to disperse the a robot. You're right. It, it should be an automated system, like like a, like, a, like a Department of of Homeland Security, right? Like a big federal government <laughs> no that one. knows, you know, government bureaucrats sitting at offices deciding what people, you know, can and cannot do, right? No, no, no. It's a system where everybody holds their own private keys and can log in with their own private data and log out. And no, there's no central um, repository of data that the DHS can go after. You just say, because I can't give you the info because I don't have it. I never did. That's the point. If you have it, they will come and take it. We're going to go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, Share the show with your friends. Become a member at TimCast.com. We're going to have a members-only show coming up for you at about 11 p.m. But let's read what we got here. It's me, says Visit Pelosi Vineyards. A smashing good time. Oh, I like how the memes are like Pelosi hammered. Everything hammered. And like yeah. Nancy Pelosi is always hammered or whatever. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know if that's too soon. Yeah. You know, I hope the guy's okay, man. He had to get brain surgery. I hope he's all right. Yeah, it's brutal. Let's see what we got. Cabo Rojo says, Tim and crew, shameless plug for both of us. Single Grain of Sand just released our next song, Oracle, exclusively on Rumble, all about MSM corruption, mass formation, hypnosis. Looking forward to your next song on 11.4, Music Saves the World. Ah, yes. Earlier in the show, 
I received uh, top secret documents for the new song release for the music video we're putting out, which is going to ruffle feathers. I'm really excited for it. Who is that super chatter? Was it Just Sha- now? Something Seamus something? Cabo, Cabo Rojo? Oh. I just think it was Seamus. Why do you think it was Jake? Sheamus? I don't know. You, you, you remind me of a taller, more muscular version of my friend Seamus Cogger. Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah, kind uh, of. He's a good looking guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a good looking <laughs> man. yeah. The Potato Man. Yes. Yeah. Luke loves Potato Man. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Holy mix of emotions, Tim. Jubilant for the story, angry at the government, weary the cult will stay the cult, and worried someone will do something stupid so the media can brush the story under the rug. I mean, this Pelosi guy is a crazy guy who did something stupid, you know? They, they can say what the story is anyway. So. Christina H. says, scary news on Halloween. How appropriate. That's right. It is Halloween. And it rained today, too. Mm-hmm. It always rains on Halloween, huh? Really bleak. Yep. Quispy Joe says, with all the craziness going on, bring the man Alex Jones back on the show. <laughs> okay. Alex, come on the show. It's always a good show with we, Alex Jones. We have a skit oh, right. when it comes to our uh, Alex Jones's right jar. That we yeah, want we want to do, do, oh, yeah. do a Cast Castle vlog thing with, <laughs> that would uh, with be hilarious. Alex. Yeah, it'd be super cool. All right. Salty Duckling says, what are your thoughts on the Chris Rose arrest in Florida? He was protesting an illegal two-way infringement by the DeSantis campaign with GOA Florida director Louis Valdez. DeSantis is slowly showing how much of a neocon tyrant he truly is. Benedict Arnold, too. I don't know anything about it. What happened? Do you know, Luke? I haven't heard about you guys that anything about story. I'm going to look into it now, but thank you for is letting us know. Christopher Rose was the guy's name? Yeah, Chris Rose. All right. Dominic Camarada says, hey, Tim, my brother doesn't believe the left doesn't run every institution. Can you please do a clip worthy response as how they do? It's not really the kind of content I make. You know, I do opinion and commentary and news analysis. So doing like a deep dive documentary on the left control of institutions isn't something I would do. I don't know who would be a good person for that. Are you asking me? I don't, anybody. Oh, just anyone? Okay. Cool. Any recommendations? No idea. No idea. All right, let's see. Trey Hudspeth says, Luke, where are the hoo has? It doesn't matter if you talk about Civil War. I'm drinking tonight. It's Halloween. <laughs> yeah, power to you. The hoo has are with everyone. Yeah. William Nichols says, I stumbled on Taylor Lorenz doing a live stream on TikTok tonight. I said, who is this old broad? And she blocked me. <laughs> well, you know, oh. there you go. <laughs> a Penna Nicola says, happy Halloween, Tim and crew. Watched, quote, kill all others episode last night. Honestly, you hyped it too much. It wound up being more about the aliens than anything else. The conclusion underwhelming. I don't know. I thought it was still great. I don't know what you mean. Some of those black mirrors are all over the place. Well, this is this is Electric Dreams. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was crazy. Thought it was good. All right, all right. Where are we at? D Stuff says Arkansas resident here. Excited to see Jake on the show. Voted for him in the primaries to get rid of the Rhino Bozeman. Hope to be able hope to be able to vote for him again in the future. Good luck, Jake. Absolutely. Thank what was you. that like running? Yeah. Go Hogs. It was a it was a battle. I mean, it was my first campaign. Obviously, uh, jumped off the high dive taking on an incumbent U.S. senator. Um, it's it's hard to take on incumbents these days. You know, the establishment is so powerful. They, I mean, it was the most expensive primary in Arkansas political history. Wow. wow. Um, Bozeman spent about twelve million against me. I raised twelve spent million. About three, yeah, wow. between him and his pack. Whoa. And I mean, it was it was Lord really man. funny. I mean, wow. yeah, I'm sure this this what was the commenter's name? I'm sure he, he stuff. Yeah, I'm sure he he saw the, the the TV ads. The since I was a new candidate, you know, low name ID. Their strategy was to paint me as a Democrat in disguise. Now, what? You know, don't know me that well, but that's one thing I'm not. And so they just they ran these ads with my face in between Nancy Pelosi and AOC as fake Jake, you know, the, the liberal who's going to defeat Donald Trump's America First agenda. <laughs> but th- that's how politics works. I mean, they, they yeah. just took an undefined candidate and with their war chest, that's how they defined me. And that created enough doubt in people's mind that, you know, we fell short of forcing their runoff. Wow. Um, you know, so it was a, I mean, it was a great learning experience. You know, it was, you know, hopefully a first step and we'll, we'll see what happens. Would you do anything different if you were going to do it again? I, I'm not sure that defeating an incumbent is possible in the Senate anymore. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't change a thing in terms of the campaign. I mean, I, I, I took bold positions. You know, I, I think that I moved the needle, um, you know, forced Bozeman to, to take some tough votes in the Senate that he did not want to do. He voted against the first $40 billion of Ukraine aid. when he, He's been an establishment stooge his entire career. But right before the primary was that first vote, and he voted, wow. and he voted no. I was very proud of that. 
I mean, he, he only did that. I mean, there were like four or five other senators. I mean, and Bozeman mm-hmm. was not part of that crew. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, the only thing that I would possibly reevaluate is taking on an incumbent. I, I salute those who do. But, you know, unless you have a dead body in your trunk and you're an incumbent, you're, you're going to win re-election. Yeah. It's just it's they have too much money. They're too powerful. And, you know, it's it's tough. All right. Baseman 619 says Paul had just finished his third glass of wine when the door rang. He's here. Paul excitedly spritzed a bit of Nancy's obsession onto his neck as he licked his lips and grabbed the hammer as he headed to the door. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he was there. Yeah. That was worth the thirty dollars. Thanks, baseman. We, we have the best commenters. I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the chat the whole show, reading almost all of them. You guys yeah, are incredible. Check those off. Kalishnikov says the reason the right doesn't protest isn't cultural; it's systematic oppression. Social media repeatedly censors right wing gatherings, along with the barrage of media smears and mili- military adversity. Yeah. I- I think that the definition, like protests have changed to online now. If you make an internet YouTube channel and you get 100,000 views, that's a big protest. You're, like, you're able to protest things with your voice and then people will listen and change. And you don't have to stress out the militants by gathering tons of people because that's when they start to get really concerned is when there's large groups. Jason Take says, on the Joe Rogan show, Vijaya's smug answer to you about the government being comfortable about Twitter's actions make a lot more sense now. That's uh, right. Yeah. Interesting. It's true. Tina Collette says, try to share this live feed to my Facebook page. It kept trying to share your Will of the People music video instead. That's a weird uh, YouTube glitch where it shows the graphic from it instead, I think. So maybe it was working, but it was showing the wrong graphic. I don't know. You'll all, many, many people also notice that when we launch the live streams, there's no thumbnails. Often it's just like a gray block. What's up with that? Who knows? Yeah. Mm. But then when people are scrolling through YouTube, they see a gray block and they don't realize it's the show and then they don't, you know, they ignore it. Or people are like, I can't find it. How do I find it? And it's like, it's the gray block because they're not putting our thumbnail up. Yeah. Very weird, huh? How about that? I got a notification today, which is good. But that's, yeah. I mean, that's the first one in a couple of weeks. So Perry LC says USA out of diesel coming November 21st, 2022. Ooh, I'm excited for that. Well, we're down to 21 days. Mm-hmm, someone, right. you know, someone want to Google U.S. diesel supply just to make sure? Because I know we were at 25 days, but they replenish it. It's not like it just goes down to 25 days and then mm-hmm. just disappears. Sure. It's if, if supply stopped, there would be 25 days until right. it's gone. Yeah, that's still absolutely insane. It's the Once worst diesel that, oh, stops, wait. everything stops, especially yeah. farming. Like that is super dangerous. People don't understand. It's not just gasoline fueling this country. It's, no, diesel. it's diesel. I think this members only segment is going to be particularly lit because I've been watching a bunch of stuff over the weekend, plus some of the stuff we were talking about. So sign up at TimCast.com for the members show. Yeah. Did you Did you look it up? Ian? Yeah, I'm reading about it. No. What, is it what, what does it say? How much is left? 21? Uh, 25? 26 million barrels. They usually have a number. The they have a chart that shows, there's a chart that shows how many days in the supply are left. Okay, this might take me some time. Well, see if you can find it. Let's read some more. John Stewart says ten dollars more for the Alex Jones was right jar. We actually have a lot of money in that jar. Yeah, it's yeah. Wild. But but like I I don't know why people just put money in it. You know, like whether or not they're listening to Alex Jones, they just put money in it. Oh, let's grab some more super chats. Michael McLeod says, "Can we impeach Biden now? Harris be damned, the regime has got to go." I don't know. Uh, when the Republicans win. Maybe you'll get some support, some for impeachment. I doubt half the Republicans would sign on for it, though. Half would be for it, half would be against it. Mm-hmm. I'm from News Talk, KGVO.com. Yeah, 25 days of supply, of diesel supply. You were asking for something specific about a change in that? Well, anyway, it looks like we're about 25 days. 25? Yeah. That's where we've been, yeah. Douglas Kaplan with a very big super chat. Thank you very much. He says, Tim, I have to ask this. Earlier today, I got a message claiming to be you. I have to know, was that really you posting to me in that one YouTube message you talk on Telegram? I said about Luke talking about the dust from Bill Gates thing. And I made a reference to Bible revelation and the sun shining through a sky like, like sad cloth. If anybody is messaging you claiming to be me, it's a scam bot. That's just it. The scam bot. There's like scam bots that post crypto scams with my avatar on, on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, everywhere. It's crazy. They, yeah. they don't crack down on those, but, but you, you, you you dare talk about some vitamins. Oh, it, it's the end of you. If, if the account isn't verified, hmm. then look, all my, all my YouTube accounts are verified and my Twitter is verified. My Instagram is verified. That's the point of verification. So 
Safety and happiness says salty tears tsunami alert. Well, okay. I'm listening. Leif Hagen says, why did Hillary let Benghazi happen? Then blame it on and even jailed the guy for posting a film online. Why did Pelosi let January 6th happen? Then use it as an excuse to silence Trump and remove Parler. No. Good questions. Cultural abduction says, Timmy, do you think the Twitter story is the biggest October surprise ever? Yeah. I mean, look, we've got hard confirmation. The U.S. government is colluding to manipulate and manufacture public opinion. That is massive. Like I, mm-hmm. that is in, that is insane. It's huge. It's like real deep state. Yeah. I mean, there you go. And they're like, deep state doesn't exist. You can no. be like, here's a story from the intercept, a progressive left-leaning publication. Yeah. And it's this lawsuit from Missouri is, is a really interesting man. Mm-hmm. All right. A pen and Nicola says, basically, Tim, my gripe with electric dreams episode is that you made it sound like a twilight zone thriller, but it wasn't nearly as interesting. Ah, I think so. Maybe you just didn't like it. That's fine. You're not, you know, we don't have to like the same things. It is what it is. I think people should watch it. Do you guys watch it yet, Luke? Nope, I have not. What are you doing? Huh? You guys haven't watched it? Yeah, I'm not big on TV. Shame. For shame. I like to make it. You got to watch Electric Dreams on Amazon Prime. The episode is called Kill All Others. Okay. Yes, yeah, interesting show. You got to check, check it out. All right, all right. None your business, says Ian. Lava Bits SSL keys were used for transport encryption, not message encryption. They could still be used to decrypt incoming mail without PGP. Interesting. Hmm. Some of those words went over my head, but that uh, does explain that it wasn't direct messaging to messaging SSL keys. Thank you. Patriot American says, Jake, the right is split into four factions. One, the old right. Two, paleocons. Three, neocons. And four, the new right. And the libertarians. We need to bring all the anti-establishment supporters from all factions together if we are going to win this. I think we need international community support as well. It does not stop at the end of the American border. We need everybody on board. What do you mean by that? Like, we need global support. Just like the Americans couldn't win the revolution without the French, we can't do this without the world's support. We need all of these, all the anti-establishment force from all these other countries to come together to form a coalition to compete against those who are trying to form this international coalition. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? Like in a parallel economy, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> Multiple parallel economies. Yeah. I think that there's this mindset of Global like, if you're not with us, yeah. you're against us kind of mindset. That's not true. You can be parallel of you without being with or for or against. Let's grab more super chats. Ian Kinney says, Obama through the NDAA got rid of the Smith-Mund Act of 1948 and Foreign Relations Authorization Act of 1987, which prevented the U.S. government from using propaganda on the American public. Wow. Yeah, people talk about that quite a bit, no? Triton 54 says, it's here. The establishment is so desperate, it's telling on itself. Never before have they been as dangerous as they are right now. Keep an eye out for a 9-11 size dis- distraction. Trump's arrest, mushroom clouds, ears and eyes open. Desperation is a, is a, is a what's the word? Pungent perfume, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, Yeah, pungent. Salt Miner says, hey, Tim, so glad you brought Jake on. I'm a huge hog fan and just wanted to say I love watching you play. We are in dark times and we are going to need more people like all of you in the coming days. Thank you. Razorback fans are the best. And we didn't talk about the NFL much, but what was the greatest play of your life? (sighs) Greatest play. So it probably happened in college. Yeah, Yeah, you got your Super Bowl ring. Yeah, Super Bowl ring. For those who haven't seen this, very subtle piece of jewelry here. <laughs> it's, uh, that's why I never wear it, but it was great for the campaign. You seen mm-hmm. that thing? Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Super I want to check it out again. Get an earring <laughs> out of it. Yeah, when I was in college, probably my, my the play I'm best known for, uh, my senior year against South Carolina, um, came on the blind side sack and like literally knocked the quarterback unconscious. He fumbled the ball, scored the next play, kind of ended the game. So. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, I let off my campaign launch video with that with that hit just to kind of set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that in the U.S. Senate. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Super Bowl ring. Yeah. Rob says I sold all my Bitcoin and bought Doge a month ago. So far, have doubled my money. Wow. Do- Doge has been <laughs> Doge has been spiking. Not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> what was the ca- what was the catalyst? I mean. Elon, Elon, I think. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Elon, Elon support. Whoa. Elon might integrate it with Twitter. <laughs> with do, Twitter. Is he really? He might. That's been I have, I have, you don't know. You it's never know. 116% in the last week. I have 46 Doge. So I just, just cannot like, take it seriously. It's not based on anything. It's just, it's just a... Well, I mean, you can make it your utility token. You can look it up. So there was some Goldman trader who literally retired off of Doge speculation. Like He, he saw what was coming and he put like you know a couple million to Doge at like one penny. <laughs> 
and then sold it at maybe a dollar or whatever, like, like maybe sixty, whatever at the peak. He sold out at the peak and made you know nine figures. Wow. wow. Four, I think it was like fourteen <laughs> cents at one point. It's uh, what is it right now? One point two cents. Yeah, I think it was up to. I don't remember. Yeah, last week it was seven cents. Now it's twelve. Yeah, I think it hit in the mid sixties. Oh, yeah, it's twelve cents. Twelve cents. Yeah, that right now the, it's at twelve. That was the peak. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what's funny is like you'd think that because we're in the news, we would be really good at these trades. Because like we're sitting here going like, oh look, you know, Elon. There's rumors of him integrating Doge, and now Doge is, is you know value is spiking, and then we just don't do anything. We don't buy any Doge, and then a week goes by, and they're like, oh yeah, I doubled my money on Doge, and it's like, how are we the ones doing the show and not capitalizing? <laughs> Some on Doge? crazy dudes put like all their money into that kind of thing. That back, that gamble. Mm-hmm. It, the highest it's ever been is sixty three cents. Right. That was a year and a half yeah, ago. That's crazy. Wow. It went from like, it went from nine thousandth of a cent. To 60 cents. <laughs> How right. many Doge are created each year? That's the question. A lot. Yeah. It's like 2%, I think. Yeah. There's 132 billion in supply right now. And the maximum supply... Oh, it's is it at its maximum? No, there is it's, no max. It's, it's supposed it can be to, printed it, infinitely. It's supposed yeah. to be inflationary currency. Yeah, it's not... There's no value to it. Like the, I mean, they, it's, they, the value the, is the what, idea, you, what you want it to be. The idea of it was that the money supply would expand. Whereas with the other cryptos, like well, like Bitcoin, it's eventually going to stop. Right. The idea with, with Doge is that it can be used as cash because it just goes up 2% every year or something like it's that. It's a meme coin. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, I bought like it could a, work. 100 bucks when I first came out like 2013 and then that computer got stolen in my car. Imagine my shock when it was 67 cents and I couldn't cash out on that. Woo! I'm watching the price change in real time as we're talking yep. about Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. it's going on. Har- yeah. Harrison Bonner says, Luke, fellow New Hampshire and freedom lover here, but currently stuck behind the Iron Curtain in MA. Oh, no. Thanks for all that you and the crew at TimCast do. Would love to buy you a beer someday, or if we're lucky, another Louis. Oh, man. Louis was fun. We yeah. cracked open some Louis 13 when the Elon closed the deal. Oh, wow. Yeah, very expensive. I, I had that one time at the uh, the Patriots rookie dinner. That, that was a highlight of every season uh, in the NFL. Some teams stopped doing it. The Patriots still did it because Brady was very into it. Hmm. Um, every year, one road trip, um, the veterans would make all like take all the rookies out to dinner and give us the tab. And I think it was like thirty four thousand dollars. Wow! And so yeah, we had all the cognac, all the bottles of wine. I mean, and the rookies had to pay for and it. And the rookies paid the tab. <laughs> oh. And we divided it up based on signing bonus. So I was a third round pick. So my I think my my cut was like two grand. Wow! We had two first round picks. I think theirs was like you know ten or twelve thousand dollars <laughs> for one dinner. But yeah, the tab was like thirty four thousand wow. dollars. Is that including tip? That's including tip. for the entire team. For the entire team. Oof. Well, yeah, uh, most of the team went out, and uh, you know Brady. I mean, just this guy's worth you know nine figures and he was the, he was the ringleader he was like you know ordering everything and just i mean he loved like sticking it to the young guys Why? He, did he I get it stuck that. to him when it's he hazing. was a rookie I, i'm sure this was like ptsd from like his <laughs> rookie <laughs> dinner it, yeah. um, nine figure salary and you're gonna make the, the the low guy pay for it i'm too much of a of a commie to, to allow something like that <laughs> that's commitment well they're yeah, making I'm so not, much we, money like i mean imagine is that the purpose is like exactly it's just kind of a it's a uh it's a hazing thing you know mm-hmm. in a in a you know not like you know sadistic way and it was fun i mean we got a good story out of it like when else am i I get and drink Louis the Thirteenth cognac. Mm-hmm. Was it good? It was very good. It was. It was. Yeah, we. It, it was strikingly good. We have some. Yeah, it's you're, you're owed a small bit for the uh, celebration. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we should have some right now in celebration of the DHS <laughs> leaks that came out, and finally we're finding really out what's something. Now you want to celebrate that? <laughs> yeah, we find out what happened. We're finally, the you know, uncovering. Yes, everything I've been screaming about for years came true. <laughs> so hey, let's drink. You're gonna get a phone call from a friend, like Luke. I'm sorry, I was wrong. It's not a private corporation. Bryant Lewitt Laws says, hey, Tim, we have less than 20 days worth of diesel. Uh, is the government holding us hostage to vote blue or is this career suicide? Less than 20? Is that where we're at? Because that's what some other people were saying, too. With two days ago, it was at 25, according to one source. But that could have changed Woo! in two days. I think we can we turn better, plastic into diesel and we should start doing that locally. We should go uh, fill the truck up. With diesel, mm-hmm. how long does diesel stay good? I already did that and uh, filled up my tanks and then backup tanks. Mm-hmm. Does it evaporate? I did over that time? in my. I did that in Florida too, right before there was an infrastructure attack. Uh, but uh, it, it could last. Uh, d- depends, uh, you know, a few months. I think six months. Really? Around there? Yeah. yeah. But after six months, what do you do? Use it. No, but I mean, like, if it's in, if it's if it's gone bad and it's in your truck, you, you can't drive it, can you? Well, I don't know. I'm not a diesel expert. Yeah, this is six to twelve months. Then it gets gummy. Yeah. Oh, no. Hmm. How do you rejuvenate old diesel? Pour uh, 50 uh, gallons uh, of old diesel into the 50-gallon drum, measure three ounces of PRDD or 280. 
Yeah, it's add probably like reconditioner. additive. Uh, yeah, reconditioner. Hmm. All right, all right. James Cutbirth says Justice Department is busy arresting parents as domestic terrorists while China claims 230,000 suspects in U.S. were successfully persuaded to return to China from April 2021 to October 2022. Wow. Suspects. Crazy. Pinochet's helicopter tour says, when I'm weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that is according to your principles. When I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. Frank Herbert. That's right. I love that guy's name, Pinochet's Helicopter Tours. Super I was in funny. Chile, and it's so fresh in their memory. Pinochet was like this autocratic dictator sure. that would take people on helicopters and drop his political or people he didn't like out of helicopters. Like they just had black helicopters, and people would go up. They'd never come back. They, they would drop them into the ocean and stuff. Mm-hmm. Pretty dark, Jeez. dark, but uh, I like the name. Yeah. Chile's beautiful. It's like, so Vin- amazing. Viña del Mar, have you ever been there? No, Incredible I didn't leave Santiago. City. I went to yeah. see the Capitol building Santiago's where Pinochet okay. killed yeah. himself. Wait, no, no, it was the guy right before Pinochet that killed himself. In right. quotes, he was there, and then they were like, "What was that guy's name?" Valparaiso is also really, really an incredible yeah, city. I loved pretty. spending time down there. I almost moved to Chile. I, I Me literally, too. I literally was this close from from living in Chile forever. Yeah, yeah. there. It's why one didn't of the you? Greatest mining countries um, on earth. It, it was all like, was, I was like, if I'm going to miss this flight, I'm I'm not. I'm just going to live here. Hmm. The flight, oh. was, the flight was delayed. And I and I waited and I did everything and I was like whatever the the rental car was late there there was a like long, long line there was you know problems there was a long security check and I'm like this is a sign I got to live here I and then and then comma. and then and then I walked in like 40 minutes late to the plane and the plane's delayed and I'm like this is a sign that means I have to go back so oh, I, I just see. took it that way the plane yeah. was waiting for you yeah literally because yeah. not for me but there was just a technical delay you know the no, federalities no, was, are everywhere it was for you. It's all federal government. Maybe. There's no local cops. So like you got feds on every, cor- not on every corner, but if you make a mistake in one area of Chile, you make a mistake in every area. So I, I just of- loved Valparaiso because it was like a fishing town and it was kind of uh, bohemian, but it was kind of free. It was, it was, it was like a San Francisco without the state. Dude, uh, people it, it would talk beautiful. so highly of Valparaiso while yeah, I was there. I loved it there. It was incredible. It's a very yeah. narrow country. Yeah. Very yeah. narrow. Yeah. What's, the gov- a, what's, it- what's the width mile wise? Um, no, I'm not sure, not but a lot uh, of coastline. Yeah. A lot of coastline. A lot yeah. of coastline. I've had an idea that they could, because they're like, we need more Chile. They want to make the size bigger. So I was like, you can tap the volcanoes with a sieve, get the uh, lava to flow down to the ocean and yeah. to create more land, like cool yeah. into the water. And then you like, grow Chile out. Into the or, ocean. or here's an idea. Give guns to your people and then just take the land from someone else. That's been done before. (laughs) I had a Chilean girlfriend there. Like me too. Set. I was just. I I had. I was in. I was a month in there, and I'm like, this is amazing. It's it's amazing. I found a like a hidden little community that was like in the woods. That the a lot of uh, German speakers. No, no, that's Argentina. (laughs) No, Argentina. Argentina. All right. right, Let's read some more. Kane Abel says, Tim. Are you and Luke using Ian to speak in code because the FBI told you not to report the facts and truth of the matter of the Pelosi? Ian is actually making more sense here. Well, you know, sometimes you know Ian rolls 20s. Yeah, that's right. So he's rolling, rolling a 20. There I'm choosing to speak code on my own. <laughs> that's right. And code that no one understands. Right. Only Ian. <laughs> Beat Borp. Beat Borp. <laughs> All right. Schlongathan McTwinkletwat. Good name. Says, question for Luke. How do you feel about regime libertarians actively ruining the ideology? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite meme is like the two people fighting and then the one person, uh, you know, with the bong laughing. And it's like libertarian fighting a libertarian with the libertarian laughing at the libertarians <laughs> fighting each other. Um, I, I do believe there's a lot of, uh, you know, what, 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 a COINTEL probe kind of like behavior inside the libertarian uh, party that has kind of made it the larger joke that it is. The, the candidates that they had within the last few years were, were just utter jokes. Uh, you you had the Benghazi guy. You had the Black Lives Matter uh, woman. It was just ridiculous. Um, and and again, we shouldn't be prioritizing a lot of this nonsense. We shouldn't try to placate Black Lives Matter or or the national security state. We should just be pr- promoting personal responsibility. Just having people that are going to be the strongest, best versions of themselves. If we just focused on you being the best version of yourself, health wise, uh, f- physically. Mentally, spiritually, man, would that party, you know, take off because th- th- there wouldn't be a need for the party. And that's essentially what libertarianism is, according to my own opinion. All right. EW says, Ian, Exxon made more profit last year than in 2020 and 2021 than in 2022, uh, 2020. 
because COVID killed demand and oil companies took a loss in 2020 because of it. Pay attention to why it happened and how the narrative is framed, please. Wow. Interesting. Good news. I'm so it's to, four times only because, because it dropped. Right. Well, let's dig into that's that. What and make sure that's what I was saying. It's a record profits, and it's like, is it inflation related? So I guess the best comp is what, 2019? That'd be, you know, pre pandemic. Yeah. The let's, best years of our lives. I yeah, think they let's, were saying. Let, that. Let's see that comp. All right. Here's, here's a good one. Where is this? Um, Michael Krotow says, quote, a media infrastructure that is accountable is the opposite of a free press. Accountable to who? They, the press, to be accountable to the state. They want state media. They want propaganda. Yep. That's right. All right. We'll grab just, uh, we'll grab one more. Here we go. But they should be accountable to the viewer. Eric yeah. uh, Mercon, Mercone says, Tom Brady was the only player in sport ball history to take a $60 million pay cut so the team could hire better players. That's actually a great point. So one reason for the Pat's success over the years was that Brady played for a substantially sub-market contract. Um, you know, he was the mm-hmm. best quarterback in the game, whereas other QBs like Joe Flacco or Drew Brees, um, you know, Russell Wilson, you know, whoever, they take these massive contracts that cut into the salary cap. Because the NFL, unlike the Major League Baseball or uh, the NBA, there's a hard salary cap. So each team can only spend a certain amount of money. Um, when your QB1 is taking up a $30 million per year cap hit, that really hamstrings the rest of your roster in terms of, you know, talent acquisition. So Brady... Uh, you know, he played for, I think, an average of like eight to $10 million a year when he was worth 30. It helps when your wife is, you know, independently wealthy. So it wasn't like he was, you know, missing any meals. Um, but, but also at a certain point, it's like you're worth millions of millions of dollars. So it is, it is legit that he's doing it, but it like, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a lot different from someone who makes like a hundred K being like, I'm going to go down to 60, it's right. like, man, you're really hurting yourself on this one, you know? True. It, it was... But it's cool. It's cool. It was to the benefit of the team, and there is, there's a counter-argument. So um, the NFL Players Association had a lot of beef with that because ultimately what the NFL Players Union wants is to eliminate the NFL salary cap. And the best way to do that is to make... Because there's, I mean, not, not to get too deep into this, but there's there's a divide amongst NFL owners. There are some NFL owners, like the the, the super wealthy ones, like Jerry Jones, um, who want to get rid of the salary cap so they can be like the New York Yankees and spend four hundred million dollars a year to get the best players. Um, there are other owners who are cheaper who like the salary cap because it keeps costs down. So when someone like Tom Brady plays for a sub market deal, he's in effect helping the owners who want the hard salary cap because that overall depresses the market value for quarterbacks. So in a way, yes, he was helping the Patriots. In another school of thought, he was hurting the rest of the league in terms of the players because he was artificially depressing uh, NFL salaries. You think they should keep the salary cap? I don't think so. I think the best system, I think baseball has the best system in a lot of ways um, because it lets teams like the Yankees or Dodgers or Red Sox um, spend whatever they want to spend to get the best players. Um, and that, that obviously, uh, enhances the market for players. You know, it, it increases their salaries because there's a pure competitive environment. Um, I think it's a, it's a freer market. Some would say that, you know, like that hurts competition, but that's BS because like, you know, the, the, the Rays have won the world series, the Astros, I mean, these are low spending teams. Um, you know, they do more with less, um, while letting the, the higher cap teams spend unlimited amounts of money. Um, so it helps everyone. That's what Moneyball was about, the movie. Correct. The, the, the Oakland A's, they were one of those lower spending teams. Um, and, you know, Brad Pitt's character in the movie, Billy Bean, um, you know, he devised this or he, he used this, um, you know, system, uh, Sabermetrics, to try to identify better, cheaper players. Ah. It's All right, a everybody. Fantastic movie. Yeah. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and become a member at TimCast.com. We're going to have an excellent members only uncensored show coming up at about 11 p.m. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me at TimCast. Jake, do you want to shout anything out? No. Glad to be here, guys. This is awesome. Got a social we're, media account or anything like that? Where can oh, people yeah. find you? Yeah. At Jake Beck at 91, J A K E B E Q U E T T E. I am verified on Twitter. I'm not sure oh, if I'm, not sure if I'm, gonna, not yeah. sure if I'm gonna pay for it, but yeah, I, I'm on Twitter, Instagram. Um, that's pretty much it. Facebook. Right on. Yeah. Jake, that was great. Thank you so much for coming no, on. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. My website is LukeUncensored.com. I did a video today about UK scientists creating a mutant super strain of COVID. Why? Well, I have my theory. LukeUncensored.com. Also, uh, let's start telling people about Twitter. Let's make it the place. I've been posting a lot of pictures on there, a lot of videos on there. Check me out at LukeWeAreChange on Twitter. 
and uh, let's have some conversations there. Let's do it. You posted a picture of me earlier on your Twitter page. No, no, funny. no, no. I posted a picture of two of you. Of, of, and Ian Miles Chong, I guess, was involved. That was the somehow. wrong one. No, that, that, was, that was the picture of like four of us. Jake, it was great meeting you, man. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for yeah. letting me hold the Super Bowl ring. That was Absolutely. the first one I've touched. It was awesome. Anytime, guys. I felt like I was there. Yeah. <laughs> felt the power. Catch you later, everybody. Hey, guys. I'm Serge.com. I'm on Twitter, too, now, and I will be on there. Hopefully, you'll add me as a friend. I was your first follow. Oh, that was the wrong. I made another account. I didn't think I had an account. Oh, so. I'm following you now, bro. Hey, how all right, you? everybody. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers.